Hooray. All right, is everybody here and ready to do the thing? I'm trying to log into the roll 20 right now. All right, let me know when you're in, and we will pick up where we left off. Well, I can actually jump into that fun dialogue now, I suppose, eh? Alrighty, folks, if you recall from our last fun little session here, you managed to make your way to the entrance of this oh-so-wonderful cave. Uh, Sinestra's attempts to encourage the group to move forward had him firing a spear of our uh, energy into the top of a nearby tree, causing undead underneath of it to rise to action. They were swiftly dispatched by your party. Currently standing, Sinestra is standing uh, roughly five feet or so up the embankment of a hill, which uh, Galasaur, uh, what the heck's this guy's name again? Thalon and Orzom were standing at the top of the hill. Lacuna and Sinestra are at the bottom of the hill, where Dark Elven Traveling Companion is sitting closest toward the entrance of the cave. We're going to say you guys are roughly 60 feet, give or take, from the top of the hill. Just over the edge as you're looking up toward the rock face, you can see the hint of the entrance of a cave. Let me know when I get that fun little dialogue going. Let's put it up over here. Should have DD beyond. Make sure I have the extension. Where are my extensions? This site's been here like a while. There we go. Make sure I got DD Beyond extension activated. Yeah. So everybody, the, whatever few viewers we happen to collect here at this point, can see what you guys are all dying to. Uh, that's our current roster. Sinestra, Orzal, Colts, Galasaur, Lacuna, Thalon, and Dark Elven. Goodness. Click, 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 click. Just as a refresher, it's <gasps> just slash roll space 1d20, right? Yeah, for your uh, attack rolls. Thank you. Oh, so like this? Is that is that right? It's a natural three. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost a perfect roll for Sinestro. Yeah. <laughs> almost, yeah. almost the perfect. I'm just. I mean, it's it's my average roll. So. It's... Yeah, I was gonna say it's three greater than your average. Mm, chef kiss. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Or if you prefer clicking, there's a little sub menu you can bring up. If with you a bunch press of dice. D, it pops up. God, yeah, if you click on the little dice icon, hold on, left one, not right. The left one. Nah, screw that. Press D. Be the best. Be the best, Be the best you ever was. Oh no. All right, let's do this. Alrighty. Um, as it stands, as I currently just described here. We have Fallon, Galasar, uh, Orzal are at the crest of the hill that you are currently standing on. The ground levels out a bit, and for creating a larger roll of hills, are slowly inclining up toward this cave entrance. Sinestra's at the bottom of the hill. Lacuna is well, five feet or so ahead of him. Your dark elf adventurer friend is sitting on the landing above it. What? Is the party's decisions? I cower in fear and indecision. All right, that's a free action. <laughs> Galasaur wants to go up and explore the cave. Well, Galasaur can march forward to his heart's content. I I'm pushing. I'm pushing this one up the hill while she curls into a into the fetal position. Yeah, I'll just roll her up the hill. Here. A little tiefling ball. <clears throat> You're doing a force march of moving her up the hill? You're yep. not currently in combat, so you guys can move forward as much as you want. Are you just walking forward aimlessly? Uh, 
we're gonna get just to the top of the hill and i'm stopping because uh, i'll push her down the hill while she's still you know in a ball all right well the top of the hill puts you roughly let's say you're oh my gosh there, where's my move icon there it is so if you guys want to move to the top of the hill it'll put you roughly where that dark elf dude is there so right about yonder okay uh I can't do anything, so. Oh, do you not have permission to move that one? Awesome. Yeah, I can't move either. I'd say, uh, once everyone else moves, I, I'm going to be slow pushing this. All right, it, it didn't, for whatever reason, it removed control from your guys' tokens after you left. So when we switched map. Mm -hmm. So I'm. Just gotta follow them, but uh, be pushing, pushing the elf tiefling. I can up, move mine up the hill. Yeah, I'm just giving you guys control of it. Oh, okay. Um, all right. I think that's everybody. We're go we're going up the hill. All right, so you're marching your ways up the hill here. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Pushing, pushing super slow. <laughs> Up the hill, you are easier to push than a, a tree, which is nice. Hooray! Easier than push trees. So is the uh, the dark elf not gonna move? Cause he's cautiously <laughs> waiting for you guys to take action. Okay. The tiefling ball was stuck between them. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to move the tiefling, and uh, now we're stuck behind the wizard. As Galasaur approaches the entrance of the cave, oh. three more skeletons pop out of the brushwork. You I'm just gonna keep pushing. Being ambushed. Congratulations! <laughs> Good They're all job. gonna do an attack roll on Galasaur. Uh, let's see, Galasaur. Uh, as you. So they like ran up. Yeah, those guys basically did. They... You guys didn't make yeah. any action to do anything so... you're looking for. You know, enemies or any of that, you just kind of marched ahead. Uh, yeah. Galasaur, as you reach closer to the edges of the cave, a skeletal archer pops out of the nearby bush, draws his arrow, and flink, ping, plings off your armor harmlessly to the side. Uh, let's see, another skeleton marches forward, raises a gnarly looking bone club, and takes a swing at you. You definitely step to the side as it crashes into the ground. And finally, the third one walks up. Runs to the side of you, and swings. That poor guy rolled a natural 20. Well, poor for you. <laughs> oh, yay. So let's see, you're going to take... I don't get sixes. Uh, you take four points of piercing damage as he brings a short sword down onto your shoulder, slipping between the plates of your armor. Come on, old man. <laughs> Get a move on. Okay, okay. Uh, with that, <laughs> you guys need to roll initiative. Oh, the old man can't roll initiative yet. He's not there. A slow He's fool. Kind of there. Oh. Oh. Yet another one of those classic Sinestro rolls. <laughs> that. That that nat twenty where you're not even there, so you can't do anything. <laughs> First one's for Galaser, the second one's for Fallon. All right, so Galaser is going dead last. Uh, where the hell did I put my notebook at? Uh, give me a second, guys. There we are. So we have. Galosir is a one. Sinestra is a two. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Did, did you roll for initiative? Yeah. So the 15 is your initiative? Uh, yes. Thank you. 
was it 17? I should be actually adding my initiative to this. I actually got a five. Holy shit, a five? Mm-hmm. That's the Damn. Right where you're at, Lewis. I know. But <laughs> hey, it's going to matter later one day. Yeah, it's going to matter eventually here. Oh, let's I'm... see. Sorry, go ahead, Lucana. I have a plus three to initiative according to my spell sheet. All right, so that actually brings you right up here. Um, that'll put you ahead of Orzhov because you have a higher dex than him, I'm sure. Is it better than a negative two modifier? It most definitely is better than a negative two modifier. Hey. Okay. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I think you broke it. It's called fudge. <laughs> Sorry, I had to click it. The fudge roll. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And then that puts our last skeleton right here. All right, cool. So top of the round, that brings your dark elf friend here into the mix. Um, ba -ba 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 he is going to drop the earthen hammer he's currently carrying, and then make a motion as if drawing a bow, and as he's drawing the bow back, a bow of solid air materializes his hand, rolls the tag, does his little fancy shit, ba -ba -bum, and the one to your left here, Galaser, is struck with a bolt of what appears to be lightning energy. Scattering its bones into the wind over here. He'd be gone. Oh, isn't that fancy? Yeah, he's fancy, fancy. Wow. Oh, that brings us around down to Lacuna. It's your turn. I raise a shaky hand and cast uh, dissonant whispers. Level one. Washa, 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 washa. Dissonant whispers at level one. All right. Oh, let's see here. Your spell has no effect. My spell has no effect. It seems yeah. to have no effect on this game. You whispered into the night. We're raiding Aldir again. <laughs> I quit. You fuckers are on your own. I think that would have a massive effect. Oh. Right, that's, your, good. that's your action. I don't think you have any bonus actions that you can use currently. No. You've got bardic inspiration and healing word and spell your bonus actions. But if you want to end your turn there, you can do so. I, I end my turn in resignation. <laughs> Alright, comes down to Orzol. All right. Step forward. A floor forward are you going here? Is that good? That's 15 feet. You have another 15 if you want to go further than that. It should be good. Can I potentially see one of the skeletons? Uh, as it's standing here, you are staring at a tree trunk where you are standing. <laughs> You can move over to, oh my gosh, wrong button. Yeah, right there, you'd be able to see something. All right, I'll go over there, start casting a spell and say, mm, come on, friends, let us show these brainless buffoons for what. I will cast my cantrip, uh, fire bolt, fire bolt. Here he goes, burning the forest down again. So, you got a 6, add 7 to that, that brings you up to an also fun 13. Um, you managed to meet, roll your attack damage. Nice. Just barely meet the armor of his coat. A nice 9 fire damage to it. Hmm. The 
skeleton rears a gasping, soundless howl and glares toward you as your firebolt makes connection. It's not down, but he's a little more pissed now. <laughs> All right. Let's see, that brings us down to Talon's turn. All right. I am going to move here, and I'm going to whack uh, the zombie that's closest to me with my mace. So you're aiming for the one that's standing in front of Galloser then? Yeah. All righty. Roll your attack. Yeah, that definitely hits. So you're 1d6 plus 3 damage. Nice. So 4 damage coming down onto the head of this Skeledron here. You smash his skull and he goes tumbling to the ground. Into a pile of bones. Nice. Alrighty, the remaining skeleton, it is fortune for him, his turn. Uh, he's going to turn. Seeing the Orzol here shooting fire at people, level his bow at you. Yeah, that's gonna hit you. And you are going to take three points of piercing damage, Mr. Orzol. All right. Was that a Roblox death sound? <laughs> I think it was like the uh, old Minecraft one. Oh. Oh, it's my turn? Yes. Okay, all right, all right. I got a plan. I got a plan. All right. no, we're all done. I am <laughs> going to hit this tree, the one behind this, this archer, with an Eldritch Blast and try to make the, the tree fall on it. Yeah. All right. All right, go for it. So, what is this? Your attack roll to hit it. It's what is it? An uh, object, so it's not going to take much. Twenty plus seven. So, so roll your d twenty, and then the yeah, just blast uses yeah plus seven modifier. Yeah, you definitely hit the tree. All right, all right. Your damage. Okay, got it. Ooh, that's some good. That's some good tree damage right there. <laughs> For some strange reason you can't quite fathom, aims his well just blast at the tree. A yes. scorch march shows into the trunk of the tree and it shakes a wee bit. Some birds fly out of the canopy of the tree and chirp angrily at you as they piss off out into the wind wherever the hell they're going. Beyond that, you really didn't do shit. Ah. Uh. It's your turn, Galser. Alrighty, I'm going to go right here, putting myself in line aside between Mr. Undead and uh, and I'm going to bring my battle axe into his fucking head. Yeah, there you go. That's no fun. Alright, 13 will hit with your modifiers. Jesus Christ, I think this is a lot of fucking damage. So as you bring your axe down on the skeleton, you basically cleave it in two. This bowstring snaps the frail, rotten wood of the bow itself, falls to pieces, and it's dead. She? You have slain a said skeleton. Quick, loot the bodies. It's, it's just it's a pile of bones. Oh, as you're standing over your fresh kill, the dark elf comes up, pat you on the shoulder, says, "Well done." She'll move in. I think so. What are you so eager to go in this cave for? And then in a prison for I don't know how long. I want to kill something. He kicks the bones at your feet. They're already dead. <laughs> Whatever. Kill that tree. Finish it off. 
Any Marsh- you do it. Any Marsh you go through here, boys. Walking up, pulling an arrow out. Say, <clears throat> well, it seems the rumor of undead is more than real life. Let us proceed with caution. The dark elf nods at you in agreement and raises an arm, motioning toward the cave. I suggest those with a bit more arm than I'm wearing take the lead. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting behind me. Uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> You're in between me and the tiefling. You could push the tiefling if you want. Speaking of which, Orzal, do you still have the light on your head? Yes, he does. <laughs> I mean, if I can't get rid of it, I'll... Oh, yeah. Okay, um, Thalon, this is a mummy as Thalon. I want to cast Eyes of the Grave again to see into the cave. How many casts so Eyes of the Grave do you get? I get three. Okay. This will be my second one. Okay. So you're divining the location of any undead that happened to be in this cave? Within 60 feet. Alrighty, let's take a so, here. So, duration is one hour on the light, by the way. Alright, well, you're... It's only been, say, about 10 minutes or so since you guys have been fiddle farting around this hill. Yeah. Alright, as you fell on, you focus your divine energy reaching out looking for the location of any undead nearby you get a very definitive feeling of some source of undead within these cave in front of you so basically it's the same as last week i know there's undead in here i just don't know how many yeah you sense there's some in here um from the inkling that you get from your magic being that it's you cannot sense anything that is behind total cover. As for your final description here, um, it seems to be coming more off to your left as you're facing into the cave. You don't sense anything to your immediate right or directly in front of you. All right, everyone. It seems that the undead are mostly on the left side of this cave. Um, What's directly in front of us and on the right is mostly... I'm going right. Eh. Galliser goes left. Eh. I'll go right. You guys just... uh. We are splitting the you party. Are stepping inside of a dark cave, by the way. The only one here with any light on them is Orzal. Uh, and I can see in the dark. Fallon can as well. So Other from... than me, will anyone have trouble? So Orzal is going left. He's got light on him. Me and the dark elf can see in the dark. So your light, is, it's 20 foot, right? It's 20 feet, yeah. Yeah. So as, um, where the hell are we at here? Orzal gets closer to your cave. The light reveals the way in front of you. Hooray! You begin to see more of the cave entrance. Yeah. I'm gonna keep going with my dark vision. I assume you'll stop me if I see anything. <laughs> I mean, you're not telling me you're taking any active looks for anything. You're just I'm looking around, team. obviously. Are you gonna make a perception check, or are you just declaring you're looking around? So I'm looking wanna, around, making sure I'm not perceptions. gonna get wrecked. I will make a perception check. Can you see in the dark? <laughs> I have dark vision. I'm a tiefling, okay. up to sixty feet. Okay, do it. Astro's character sheet over here. Why do I have your character sheet? Alright! Lacuna's got dark vision to 60 feet. Um, looking around the cave, Lacuna, using that dim bit of light that is being emanated from Orzal's hat, enhanced by your dark vision, you don't see anything in the immediate vicinity of the cave around you. However, looking north toward where the cave branches deeper into the mountain, you do see the body 
of an individual against a wall. All right, I'm going to that. Which way is it? And I scurry directly behind Sinestra. The dark elf crouches slow, low to the ground and moves at a very careful, slow and steady pace, keeping quiet and measured footsteps. He is attempting to stealth his way into a cicada. Does it work? You haven't heard any screaming or fighting yet. Well, that's good. Uh, so I'm still looking around, making sure I don't run into anything and get wrecked. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to throw an Eldritch Blast over here. You're going to shoot an Eldritch Blast into the cave wall. Yeah, can you see this ping? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I want to shoot it into like an area that is like open, but I can't see anything. You can see even though I have dark vision. You can see everything in this cave where you're at now. Yeah, it's I can't different. see. I don't know what. I don't know where anything is because the actual map is. But uh, yeah, wherever corridor whatever is open for a good distance, I'm just gonna throw an ultra blast down. All right. there. For the sake of you people with your uh, you people, you players with dark vision, we're just going to reveal the map so far. That is what okay. we can see currently. Okay. So Eldritch Blast goes this way, past the body, you just gonna shoot into it down the void. The oh yes. Imagine if it hits Eldritch something, Blast it hits something. Three hundred feet, correct? Yes, three hundred feet. And that's a 17. 17? Yes. Uh, you're shooting off into an area that you don't know, so you're going to need to roll twice, because you're going to a disadvantage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Roll damage. Uh, all right, then. Let's do this. <laughs> From down the darkened hall, you hear a rasp. Ha! Followed by the low rumble of several rocks. Yeah. That sounds mm. good. Doesn't sound like there was anything important. Did we see anything as the uh, as the Eldritch Blast flew by? As dust begins to settle in the cave nearby, you hear the moans of undead coming closer from the hall. What did you do? What I did think you I do? killed one. Uh, the dark elf. Oh, he impatient bastard steps out into <laughs> the hall, raises his bow once again. Let me make sure I'm getting the damage right on this damn thing. <laughs> uh, oh, I had the wrong damage die before. Neat. As a strike of streak of light bounces down the hall, finding its way into the chest of the zombie you had previously blasted with your Oh, so fun Eldritch Blast. Uh, with the flash of light, you see it stumbling back uh, quite a bit. It crumples down to the ground, regains its feeding. It looks quite hurt as one of his arms fall off. It continues to moan and groan, advancing in your direction. We're going to use a previous initiative order, so that brings a turn to Lacuna. Is they have initiated combat. I got one in before combat. Yes! <laughs> oh, how far is this creature? I can't see it on the map, unfortunately. You'll have to move it's further really far to away. actually see into the, the cave. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm... Is this as far as I can go, or can I keep going? So you, were... you can move up just behind where Galasar is standing. Which one's Galasar? I'm sorry. This one. So yeah, you can move. Here, I'll move it for you. You're right there. That's as close as you can get. Um, from there... Ba -ba 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 With your dark vision, you'll be able to see just a little deeper into the cave. 
but you still don't see anything back in <laughs> This is great. Can I cast Grease as far as I'm capable of seeing? Um, you can cast Grease up to 60 feet in front of you, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, you can cast it just straight to as far as you want back into the darkness, if that's what you want to do. You can go right there, just to the edge of the darkness. You no, know, she can go further than that. That's 60 feet. 60 oh. feet will bring her up into the darkness. All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast to about where the darkness ends, since I can't see exactly. So you're gonna cast it to the edge of your vision. Yes. And let me roll. You don't need to roll for that. You're just casting a spell. Anything that tries to go through it will have, oh, to, okay. have to make a save. Yeah. Well, I, save all right. Well, I cast priest, uh, and hope that it will at least buy us time if necessary. All right. So at the edge of the darkness, a pool of Thick, vis viscous black material goes and covers the entire pathway, making it passage from your estimate fairly difficult at this point. Alrighty, I should roll these guys into initiative. Um, that brings it to Thalon's turn. No, I'm sorry, Orzol's turn. <laughs> Alright, I will. Can I get to about there? Um, if there's a kind of palm-sized rock along the way, I'll pick that up. Oh yeah, you can easily. I'll cast. It. Cool. I will cast light on it and then hand it over to Val. Valen. All right. And say, I can't see anything through that head. That'll do it. All right, that ends your turn. Thalon, it is now your turn. Okay. Are you going to attempt to throw the rock? I'm going to move closer. Okay. And now I'll throw the rock. If you want to move your full distance, you can go uh, up to about there. And there for a second. All right. Do I have to roll anything? Uh, yeah, just make a general attack roll. And you can throw that rock, I believe. It's a maximum of, um, I think, 80 feet for an improvised weapon. Alrighty. So you're just throwing the rock out into the darkness beyond. Okay, you don't manage to hit anything, but you chuck the rock as hard as you can. It goes flying off into the oh-so-fun darkness. And as it whizzes past, it lights up the hallway briefly, but enough for you guys to kind of get a glimpse of what's going on down here. It sheds light dimly down the passage. What? The rock lands oh, about five feet or so behind the zombie furthest back. The zombie in green here is the one who is slumping along. His arm is laying on the ground next to him. He's got a sizable hole in his chest for where uh, Sinestra's Elder's Blast rocketed him from wherever the hell he was back in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> I love this 300 meter. <laughs> like, it's so much it's fun. absolutely ridiculous. 100 percent chance. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, let's see. This zombie is going to move forward, make an attack roll on your dark elf friend, which misses. He just kind of steps to the side as the zombie attempts to swing at him. He just casually sidesteps the attack. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. that brings it to Sinestra's turn. All right, then. I'm going to go here. And Eldritch Blast into the Void again, just as far as I can. Just Eldritch Blast into the Void? Yeah. yeah. If, I met, if I happen to hit a zombie, then whatever. <laughs> just want to keep throwing it as far as possible. All right, so... go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I have to roll again. Ooh. So you launch your just blast off into the oh so fun darkness. And yes. You just hear it. <laughs> some rocks nearby. The cave seems to shake a little bit, though. It appears to have done nothing more than that. Perfect. 
Alright, that brings it to the other zombie's turn. Who shambles forward. He's looking pretty hurt as he drags himself along. Uh, his other arm falls off as he manages to stumble forward here. And it's about as far as it gets. Where was the grease at? I forget. Oh, shit, you're right. I forgot about the grease. Both of these guys had to make a deck save. Oh. Oh, the first guy wouldn't have made it. Uh, they both made their deck safe, so yeah. They got right. what they got. And that brings it down to Galister's turn. I'm gonna go up here, and I'm gonna smack the zombie to my right with my, um, to my left with a battle axe. Alrighty, make your attack roll. Smack that axe. Let's see, your modifiers are what, some ridiculous 7 or something like that? Yeah. Yep, that hits. Can I ask how loud my Eldritch Blast was? I mean, you don't actually hear anything coming from the Eldritch Blast. You hear more of the cave walls itself being hit and stones falling. We yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, so it, was it like a... Or, or was it just kind of like a... Like a crag, like little rock falling? You hear a low rumble of... Ah, perfect. Rocks just coming down from way perfect. back in the cave. I mean, you shot it pretty damn deep into the cave. You think it may have gotten its maximum distance, if not very close to it. Um, let's see here. Galliser, you bring your axe down upon the zombie, burying it into the zombie's chest. Um, it looks pretty hurt, but that's beyond that. That's pretty much all it is. It turns and menaces you. Oh, let's see at that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. <sighs> the dark elf size. I guess stealth sounds the option, isn't it, boys? All right then. He drops the bow and yeah, that's fun. Roll a twenty. Uh, as he hey. raises his arm back with apparently no weapon in it, as he brings it hand down, a sword of flame appears in his hand and. Springs itself into the chest of the nearby zombie. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Flames lick over the zombie's body. It howls in pain a little bit, but it's still standing. That brings it down to Lacuna's turn again. Uh, I cast Cloud of Daggers on the zombie, or between, I guess, the zombies. Uh, I think I catch both of them in there, but in the space between the zombies, trying to catch them both. What are you casting? I'm sorry. Uh, Cloud of Daggers. Cloud of Daggers, nice. Alright. Um... It's a five foot cube. Bomb and then creatures that enter it or begin it. Start of the turn. Yeah, you didn't need to roll for that. You're just casting that spell. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. I didn't know the rules with myself either. You do need to roll um four D four for the damage on the spell. I presume you're casting it between the two uh zombies here? Yeah. Um, I can't tell whether it will hit both of them, but that is definitely what I'm trying to do. Alright, as a cloud of daggers materialize between the two zombies, they go, oh, how an unholy pain as they just go, and fall to pieces of finely sliced deli meat onto the ground. They are both the dead. Wow. It was a very effective cloud of daggers, look at I make a small, anxious squeak of appreciation for my magical skills and go back to hiding behind other people. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Gallus or turn some of to the people in the back and ask if one of them can cast light on, on something on him so he can see he further into the cave when he goes. I'll switch my light over to his battle axe. Alrighty. Also freeze frame this battle layout with you guys in the front. Let's just keep that forever. And we're good. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you say that now. This uh, <laughs> is going to fuck you up somehow. You're going to want at least one of them behind you one day. <laughs> Probably. We'll see. Uh, Fallon wants to investigate the body. All right. Uh, roll your d20 for investigation check. And my investigation is da, 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 da. plus two. Are we completely out of combat? As you lean down to investigate the body, it springs to life goes, ah! and reaches out, grabbing you and taking a bite out of your arm. You suffer three points of piercing damage. Ah. As the corpse rises slowly to its feet. I am going to give <laughs> Galasar an attack of opportunity as this thing is just springing to life now. So roll d20, right? Yep, roll your d20 to hit if you'd like to use it. I've heard about these. Galasar's a zombie now, we have to kill him. Adding your modifiers so that, yeah, that would hit. <laughs> Seeing it take a bite out of Fallon, you immediately react and go, Oh shit! Bring your axe down onto his heart and shoulder. Let's see here. Um, roll another d20 for a strength check. Nope. It uh, shrugs past your blow and rises to its full height. Alrighty, we're going to bring this down back up to the top of the round to your Dark Elf Traveling Companion. He, goes, uh, he sighs again. You just don't know when to leave well enough alone, do you? Walks over to stand adjacent to you and brings his flaming sword down onto the zombie, or attempts to do so, and it misses horribly. Um, slips on some rocks or whatever you want to say, but the swing goes wide. And that brings it down to Lacuna's turn again. Is that Cloud and Dagger still there? Uh, I'm pretty sure it would have dissipated by now. Okay. No, Make it's it still sure. there. Because if it's still there, then the Dark Elf has to roll because he walked right through it. Because it's right here. Yeah, you're right. He would have had it. <laughs> um, eight plus next year. No, he would have made it through unscathed. Look at him. Just barely, but he would have made it through unscathed. All right, Lacuna? Uh, who was it that got hurt? Uh, I think so far the only ones that have been hurt have Fallon been hurt. and Gallus here. Who was the one who just got bit? Fallon. All right, I uh, walk up to Fallon and put my hand on his shoulder and cast Cure Wounds. All right, so you're going to roll 1d8 and add 3 to that. You have to be within touch range. You'd be right behind him doing that. Fallon, you recover 10 hit points. Right as right now. And I think that ends your turn, right, Lakuna? Yes. Okay. That brings it to Orzal. <clears throat> Let's see the zombie attack from the glowing axe. 
Ugh, firebolt. Oh yeah, that definitely hits. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then you did six more points of damage to this poor bastard. All right. Yeah. Your fireball rocks into the poor zombie bastard that Thalon had ruined his nap of. He seems a little worse for the wear, but he's definitely still standing. And that brings it to Sinestra's turn. Eldritch Blast. At the zombie, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah. Alright, well, your 14 hits it. Oof. It's sending his head. <laughs> Eldritch Blast uh, doesn't quite hit dead center as it's fooling about me. You know, you're trying to aim between three people crowded around this thing. You, you can't really get center mass. You only barely nick the poor thing. But you did some damage. It doesn't appear to be any worse for the wear than it already was. Oh, um, that brings it back around to Gallus, sir. I'm just going to whack it again. Already? Oh, yeah, that's definitely going to hit. Thirteen points of damage? Yeah, you bury this poor bastard right back into whatever grave he crawled out of. Nice. He be one no. dead zombie. Alrighty, immediate crisis averted here. Moral of the story is anything in this cave, put an axe or whatever into it first before you look at it. <laughs> I'm looking at the body. You're gonna go up and attempt to loot the bodies, is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, I'm doing it. I'm moving back here. <laughs> Just in case it gets up again. Alright. Do 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 boop. I poke it with a stick. Then I look at stuff. Alright, you pick up a stick from the debris of whatever last storm blew into the cave and gingerly poke the body. It appears to be thoroughly dead this time. After doing so, you quickly rummage and rifle through its pockets. You find nothing more than a bit of pocket lint, and it looks like a couple pieces of uh, a broken chain, maybe. It's hard to identify with how twisted and gnarled the bits of metal is. He All right, taking wearing, the chain. Moving on. All right. He appears to be wearing a uniform that you think it may be that of a local militia. Eh, doesn't matter. He's dead now. Let's go. I'm back. I'm really sorry about that. Sorry. I'm dragging the tiefling with me. Oh, you're dragging Lacuna with you? Yep. Excuse me. Yep, you're coming with me. Go. Are you the, Are you going to make me or something? Yep, I'm just dragging you along. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you're still curled up in a ball, so I'm just dragging the ball. Like... As you're arguing with her, the dark elf pats Galasero on the shoulders. Should we take point? Yep, might as well. Alright, as you march forward, he flicks his left hand and another flaming sword appears in it. He's now wielding a couple of flaming blades. Which appear to be shedding a touch of light to help out Mr. Orzol here. As you step forward, reaching the end of the path in front of you, you come to a small ledge. At the base of the ledge, it's a pile of rocks and a couple of sizable boulders which are now embedded in the left side of the cave. Um, it looks as though there are remnants of rope and some old rusted chains, freshly severed, tied to the larger rocks. Eldritch Blast. It seems as though uh, Sinestra's Eldritch, earlier Eldritch Blast had rocketed these rocks free, saving you 
from an apparent trap that the zombies are going to try and spring on you. Woo! Wow. Directly in front of you is a 15 foot high ledge. Can anybody that sees in the dark, can they peer over it? No, but I can throw an Eldritch Blast over it. The Dark Elf. Can you? <laughs> are you actually doing an Eldritch Blast? Yes. Are you aiming? Where are you aiming at? With I'm just, blast? I'm getting over the edge and then going as far as I can. I'm slowly creeping <laughs> behind the lizard. Oh, God. They're safe. You want me to roll again? Take five points of bludgeoning damage as your Eldritch Blast rocks the cave and a rock comes loose right above you. Woo! Dark Elf turns you probably should stop doing that. No, it's fun. He shrugs. Seeing as I don't think any of the rest of you are too adapted to handling in the dark, I'll climb up here and take a look around to see if there's anything nearby. Can, good idea. Can I cast Cure Wounds on Sinestra? If you want to burn a spell slot to heal him, by all means, go for it. Don't do it. I deserve what I get. <laughs> you are down. I mean... Is that all your first level spells now? Yep. Alright. Sinestra, you recover four points of hit. Oh HP. no. So the only one that has the ability to heal now is Thalon. Yep. Right? I have, I have one second level spell left. So far as you know, yes. You're not quite sure what the capabilities of this dark elf traveling with you are as no one bothered to ask him any fucking questions. Yeah, no, I mean... Well, he, I assume he's gonna die at some point. He's pretty quiet. Are and, you uh, kidding? He's so fucking cool. We, he doesn't need any of it. Yeah, I was just gonna say, he's got flaming swords and, like, so magic bow. Climbs up over the ledge, um... The light of his weapons reveals a dim orangey glow over the top of the ledge here. If this damn thing will click. Apparently my reveal tool doesn't want to work right now. Illuminating the immediate area at the top there. Oh, let's see here. We are going to do a perception check for him. As he glances about. Quick look left to right from where you can see he's at. No, nah, looks good. Coming up. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to sit on the ledge. Ready to jump back down and run down the thing. <laughs> All right. Dark vision. What do I see? <laughs> I'm perception check. Go do perception check into this. Yeah, I want to know this. I don't trust this guy. He might have cool, cool swords, but he hasn't done anything cool for me yet lately. So, all right, Sinestra, as you climb the ledge and take a quick glance around, you find yourself in a round, high ceiling cave that opens up before you. There are two narrow exits, one leading to the north, and one leading to the south. There's a large, flat boulder that sits in the center of the cave. It's around six feet or so across. It looks to be roughly eight feet or so long and maybe three feet high. There appear to be some stains around the edge of the rock. Stain. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. That's the cave in front of you. How tall is this ledge? Uh, 15. It's about 15 feet. Do you need help getting up? You should probably ask somebody for help. I'm just gonna stand there kind of awkwardly fidgeting around for a minute. I grab the old man's hat. Take it with me. <laughs> Take it his hat? Alright. I don't All want right. to. hair goes back down and I'm on, tries to help the old man. Alright, do a uh, strength check. Oh, D20. And it's a plus 3, so 11. All right, we'll say, um, however you want to attempt to help him up, go ahead and explain it. Hmm. I just imagine. Oh, it's a plus four, <laughs> never mind. Uh, can I just pick, can I pick, can I put my axe away, pick him up, put him on my back, and just go up there? No, 
the height of this, you'd have to either, um, you could allow him to stand on your shoulders, which would give him enough height that he could, you know, reach up over the ledge and try and pull himself up over it. Or you could, um, you know, give him a foothold and just kind of try and toss him up over the ledge if you want to try and do that. Let's do the first one. All right. Uh, make an athletics check, Orzo. <laughs> And minus three. Minus three is seven. <laughs> uh, as you attempt to reach over the ledge, we're going to say um, the Tarko figure, seeing you stumbling and about to fall back, uh, nimbly reaches over and grasps your wrist and pulls you safely up to the ledge. <laughs> Watch yeah, your hat. <laughs> uh, I apologize. You're very kind. Thank you both. Lacuna stands at the base of the ledge with her arms reaching up high, trying really hard to jump as high as she can and reach oh the end. God, okay, I'm grabbing her hand. Just like, ah! help her up. Help! Bring her up. Roll the strength check. What is this? You got a plus two modifier to your strength. Yeah. Not working. Oh, See no. you later. <laughs> You are really heavy. I'm I'm going this way. <laughs> he lays down, attempts to reach, and pull you up, and just <sighs> and shakes his head like, "No, can't do it." Nope. Amazing. <laughs> I look up at everyone. Please don't leave me to die. I'm scared. Uh, the dark elf walks over to the edge, sighs, and looks at you. Mutters an incantation, and waves his hand at you. And your feet begin to leave the ground as you Great. slowly. Great, he can levitate. levitate. Wonderful. Uh, reaches out, grabs your hand, and pulls you closer to the ledge. Sets you down as he dismisses the spell and says, "I've only got one of those. Turn it to fall." I thank the dark elf kindly, and make a really rude face at Sinestra. It wasn't my idea to come along, you know. Baloney. You were the first one out the out the inn. <laughs> I was not. All right, Sinestra, you're heading off to the. Oh yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> over here already. You're heading to the left. All right. I so quit. Uh, I quit with the with with the tiefling. It's giving up on you. Eldritch blast this way. You're Eldritch blasting down the way. Then. All right. Yes. Um. Let's see here. As you look down the lane. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> you don't see anything down the immediate cave, but you're going to attempt Eldritch Blast on it? All the way down, as far as I can, and I just rolled a 20. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so as you cast your Eldritch Blast on there, roll your damage. <laughs> I'm just going to have you assume to roll damage every time you One! <laughs> as your Eldritch Blast rips down the hole here. <laughs> that sounds fun. Do we really? Oh yeah. It echoes in this wonderful cave you're in. <laughs> oh man. Alright, I'm walking over here. Alright, Galosh is going over there. Talon's going over to there. Um... Can Talon see? He has some uh, dark vision. Can he see the other end by any chance? The other end of what? Um, the entrance, the way on the right. To the right? Um, yeah. Glancing down there, you can see the edge of your dark vision would fade out right about there, give or take. I didn't see where you said there. I just revealed more of the map. Oh. Uh, you don't see it don't very see far, it. but the cave looks to appears to continue off further into the darkness. Okay. Alrighty, since you guys appear not to be doing anything, zombies are now walking out of this cave. Coming yeah. toward you. I'm just uh, waiting over here. <laughs> the front most appears to be a a female. Uh, she's wearing a tattered green dress. 
the one directly behind her, you cannot tell the gender of it, though it appears to be wearing a bear costume. The one further back is wearing a tattered and torn jester's <laughs> outfit. Okay, then. A bear costume? What kind of fucking cave is this? Did we just find a zombie circus? You don't know what's going on in this cave. Look my commentary. Did we find a zombie circus? Like, what? what's going on here? Ugh. The lacuna elects to hide behind a rock. Oh, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I right, cast so light on the, lo- on the rock. So your light fades from Orizal's hat and begins yep. to illuminate the giant boulder in the middle of the room. Perfect. Conveniently enough for you, Orzal, this sheds enough light into the room, allowing you to easily see everything. Nice. <sighs> With a sigh, the Tarkov moves into position and readies himself for combat. Is anybody I feel so bad for this Dark Elf. Uh, um, I'll hold a firebolt for when I can see him. Pro- Alright, is he Walking to the path between the two of you. Um, you guys can attack of opportunity. So the Dark Elf is going to go first. Uh, bu- 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 he swings twice. One of them manages to hit. So he brings his blade down onto it. Slashing across the side of the wonderful little zombie dress here. It appears to tatter the frame more as some of it burns away. Um, the zombie stumbles a bit. Stumbles a bit under the blow of the attack. But it is still a standing. And Galaser, you get an attack of opportunity as she comes near you. Yeah, I rolled a 5, which plus strength modifier, right? So it'd be a 9. Nope, that does not hit. You swing at it, and after, um,. The Dark Elf figure draws his weapons across her. It knocks it off balance and out of aim of range of where you were previously aiming. She stumbles aside and you just whiff the air. Uh, The next one comes into range here and walks up behind you guys. Basically trying to push his way through as this is a very narrow hallway. Um, Um... we are going to say it is now Lacuna's turn. Lacuna is clutching her dagger to her chest and is paralyzed by fear because she's almost out of spells to cast and she doesn't know what to do. Oh. So, uh, yeah, she's paying her. She's pinning her pants right now? Um, well, there's no urination at play, but the emotions are there. Um, can can I throw the dagger? Yeah, you can try and throw the dagger if you want. I will panic throw my dagger. Well, I guess I should probably move out from the rock first. Yeah, you gotta go somewhere where you can... Just throw the dagger from the rock! That's something she would do, let's be real. (laughs) What do I... What should I be rolling? I just roll your d20 to hit, add your dexterity modifier to it, which is plus two. Damn! Oh Oh my god! Definitely hits! So you're going to do 1d4 plus two damage. (laughs) She just closes her eyes, goes, ah! And throws a dagger! Yeah, she's like, eh, eh, hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn, you did good damage, too. Damn. Nice. And a panic lacuna rolls up behind the rock, almost tripping over Orzo as she pulls herself into view to see what is now menacing the group. Seeing the tattered zombie in dress in front of her, she... Panics, closing her eyes, and wings a dagger at it. By sheer luck, it manages to catch the zombie in the shoulder, embedding it there to the hilt. Your dagger is now cut in the shoulder of the zombie. Don't have- 
her anymore. Alrighty. That, that was really scary. <laughs> the result's turn. Turn up says, Good. Nice throw! <laughs> Give a shrug towards Lacuna and kind of mutter, mm, "Very talented." Mm. Bam! Damn, Joe! I assume you're casting your firebolt. Yep, firebolt, first guy. All right, so Joe peeks around the rock and just flings his fiery spell at it, picking it off into the center to the center mass. The zombie stumbles back a bit, though, and is still standing. Their dress is certainly looking a little worse for the wear at this point. Um, that brings it to Thalon's turn. Okay, I'm going to the right. And I'm going to shoot the zombie somewhere right there with a cross. With your crossbow? Mm hmm. Do you have a crossbow on Thalon? I do. Oh, you just didn't have it equipped. Alright, that's fine. You use your bonus action to pull your crossbow out of your pack and load a bolt into it. Setting it to action, roll your attack. Yeah, that's going to hit. So roll your damage. Wow, eight points of damage. Nice. Shit. Alrighty. It's the crossbow bolt lines up, goes, <laughs> picks it right between the eyes, and his head says, <gasps> as it falls back, stumbling into the zombies behind her, and they, oh, that guy makes the save. The other one wasn't close enough. So as it falls back, the other zombie goes, <gasps> smashes it against the wall next to it. Rather than getting tied up by it, the zombie then charges forward and makes an attack. At Thalon. In the process of doing so, though, um, the Dark Elf and Galasaur will get attacks of opportunity. Let's see that. And then. Yeah. She walks by in a brilliant display of swordsmanship. The Dark Elf whips his hand, blades around a flurry of activity, and just slices it to flaming ribbons as he walks by. He dead. Hmm. Yeah. He rolled pretty high. Um, ba -ba -bum. That brings us to Sinestra's turn. You're muted, by the way, sir. Yep, yep, yep. I'll just blast that way. <laughs> Are you aiming at anything or you're just blasting down the hall? I'm closing my eyes, throwing it down the hall. If I hit the zombie, I hit the zombie. <laughs> you don't hit the zombie, you smash the wall behind it. Sweet, how much damage do I do to the wall? Poof. You managed to cinch the rocks a little bit. Congratulations. <laughs> it's now Galasar's turn. Uh, hmm. Actually, I think I'm just going to wait. You're going to wait? Yeah. All right, no so point in going out of the cave. It can come to me. So you're going to hold your action for it to come? Yeah. Okay, so I assume you're holding an attack action then? Uh, sure. Alrighty. So as it comes, March the zombie comes marching down the hall and making his way towards Sinestra. Um, you get to make your attack against him. So roll your attack. Ten. Ten's not going to hit, but you do get an attack of opportunity since he's only making his way towards Sinestra. So roll another one. That brings you to what? Yeah, that'll hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. So, 12 points of slashing damage onto him. Nice. 
Galasar wings his axe by and damn near takes its leg off as it runs by. Um, taking an attack of opportunity himself, the dark elf fellow flanking the thing swings his first sword and misses as Galasar nearly takes its leg off, swings his second sword and takes a large swipe out of its back as it walks by. It stumbles a bit and continues to lurch forward, makes an attack against Sinestra. Seeing it stumbling awkwardly toward you, you just kind of sidestep out of the way and easily dodge the attacks. Um, let's see, that brings us back up to the Dark Elf guy's turn. He's going to come over here, make his attacks against it. First one misses, and the second one misses. While all of this is going on, Three skeletons come running out of the cave behind you guys. Ah! Two of them draw bows. Let's see. It fires an arrow at Lacuna, which misses. Ricochets off the wall and bounces, skittering harmlessly. Just in front of Sinestra's feet, the other one draws a bow and shoots at Orzol, which is going to hit. Also, you're going to take four points of piercing damage as an arrow embeds itself in your back. So many arrows today. Enjoy! You're an easy target, old man. <laughs> Alrighty, that brings us to Lacuna's turn. Uh, quick question, is the zombie I initially hit still, like, is the body still there? Yeah, the body's there. They're, um, they're in the entrance of this cave here. So, as a, before I actually attack, can I go and pull the dagger out of its shoulder? I mean, you could use your movement to get there and pick your dagger up. You are going to get an attack of opportunity off the remaining living zombie here. As you will pass directly through it to get to that point. Oh, uh, okay. Um, you still have, uh, it looks like a rapier if you want to attack with that, though. All right. Um. So this. So the zombie's still alive. So I pull out my rapier and come to the side and a attempt to slash at the zombie. <coughs> Alrighty. Will your attack? I don't I'd say I don't think that worked. You and your panic you attempt to run over there and frantically lunge at it with your rapier and whiff wide. Alright, that brings us to Orzo. <laughs> the nerve. <laughs> Let's get real. I'm gonna turn around. And I'm going to use my Scorching Ray on the Skeletons. Which one are you aiming um, for here? Let's go. First, can I do first two on this first one? And okay. then the one in the back, if I can see him, one of them? Yeah, I mean, you can see all three of them where they're standing. Okay. And would you like three separate rolls or just one? Uh, three separate rolls. Okay, first one. Yeah, that's Natural 20. A crit, so yeah, definitely hits. Cool. Let me do the damage, which is 2d6. Sorry, spells. 2d6, okay. So you blast for 20 points of damage. The skeleton as your fire, your scorching ray and packs it just goes the bone is shattered to dust. Scorched and fun in the flaming dust. He be dead. Nice. One in the back. Alrighty. Yep, that's a hit. Six points of damage to it. Your scorching ray makes contact with his bony butt. Um, the bones get charred and singed a little bit, but he is not out yet. Okay, and since I aimed my first two on the first guy, um, will my third ray just not? No, you only cast two of them at this point. Okay, I'll so do one last one in the back. You going for the one you already hit? <gasps> oh, yes. natural one. 
as you go to cast a spell and feeling quite comfy, you go, oh, I got you, oh, and you just trip and on some stones beneath you and fall to your ass. Shit. That'll be my turn. All right. Let's see, that brings then, uh, that's going to get the skeleton that you just blasted, is going to draw his bow, and that's definitely going to hit you, because you've got no goddamn armor. Um, you're taking 10 points of piercing damage as an arrow embeds itself in your gut. Ooh. Ah. That doesn't look good. Alright, that brings us to Thalon. Yeah. I'm going to cast level 2 healing word on our wizard first. You're going to use healing word? Yep. Okay. Second I don't level. Need it. I don't need it. So at second <laughs> level, you're going to do 2d4 plus your casting level. So plus 3. You do know that... Oh, do you not have cure wounds memorized? Guess not. All right, never mind. Healing word it is. So you recover seven hit points. Thank you. You still have your action, by the way, Fallon. So that's a bonus action to cast healing word. Okay. I'm going to move. Hmm. And I'm going to poke the skeleton right here with my man. Alrighty. So you add your proficiency modifier along with your strength here. That brings you up to a 12. That just barely hits him. You're good. Roll your damage. Because these also wonderful skeletons are vulnerable to the bludgeoning impact of your mace, the bones just shatter and crumble under your uh, your blow. This thing is barely hanging on as you've basically destroyed its rib cage. It's just it's being held up by whatever frays and tatters of necrotic energy that brought it to life. That ends Thalon's turn. The skeleton you just beat the shit out of turns and swings at you. Yeah, that's definitely going to hit. Uh, he brings its... What looks to be a femur of another skeleton that it salvaged from a nearby cave. Brings up and cracks it down on your shoulder. You take three points of bludgeoning damage. He's beating me with himself. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, Joe murdered that skeleton. It is Sinestra's turn. Acid splash. The one directly in front. Mm. Yeah. All right. So what is this? What is <laughs> this? Shit zone. All right. Let's see if he makes his deck save. As you go to splash your acid out, he sidesteps it, avoiding the brunt of your acid splash. So do your damage out, and it's going to take half damage because he succeeded his sex deck save. He took one point of acid damage. Hmm. Woo! And as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Expeditious Retreat. All right. I'm out. Woo! Are you going to move? I'm moving. You take an attack of opportunity against you, and he misses. Yeah, I knew he would. Screw that guy. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the zombie, having you having left his range of attack, it turns and attempts to swing at Lacuna, and misses. All this brings you to Galliser's turn. I take a step, and... I swing. Well, let's see, that plus... Yeah, that's gonna hit.
Kenshi. He bring the axe down to the back of the zombies. It attempts to swing at Lacuna, burrowing it down to the ground and pinning it there as you sever its spine and ending the spark of life that remained within it. This bastard doth be dead. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, welcome. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see here. Walking over toward where Orzol is, the Dark Elf reaches his hand out, touches you on the shoulder, Orzol, casting Cure Wounds on you. You recover seven pit points. Nice. That turned around quickly. <laughs> it is now Lakuna's turn. You there, Lakuna? Hello? Hello. Hello. Oh. Everybody went really quiet for a second. What's going on? It's your turn. Okay. Um, well, now I am going to go retrieve my dagger really quick. Alright, so that's going to take your full movement. Basically, your entire turn is going to be spent just recovering your dagger. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, so then you're going to be right there at the entrance of the cave. Alrighty. And then that brings us to Orzol. <clears throat> that was some interesting blood loss. Anyways. <laughs> Try not to do that too often. Go over here and do a fire bolt at the nearest skeleton. Alrighty, roll your attack. Oh yeah, that's gonna hit him. Fuck off. Oh yeah, that definitely pins his ass to the ground. The firebolt impacts him and the teetering skeleton already on his last little limping leg of life after Thalon beating it to the inch of undeath death just kind of crumbles to ash and falls against the wall there. He doth be dead. Alrighty, that brings us to the remaining skeleton, who attempts to draw a bow and shoot you, Orzol, but as he does, the string on his bow breaks. The arrow clatters harmlessly to the ground. It's Thalon's turn now. Alright, I'm going to... Talon's going to move right here, and he's going to smack him up, Mr. Undead. With... Oh yeah, that's going to hit. Yep, as you bring your mace down, you just, just wreck it. Knocking the arms off the poor skulls and then shattering its skull as it falls to the ground in a pile of dust. The doth be dead. Nice. Go team. <clears throat> Can I see anything? I'm going to ask Dylan over here. Uh, and yeah. see further into the cave. Peering down there, you see that the cave comes to a nice little bend, curving off to your left as you look down. I am going to run as far ahead into here as possible. You're going to run into that cave. Um, I'm just, it's, I'm using my dash. Everything's going. Keeping it going. Well, I know who I'm not following, says Gemma Galliser. Thalon watches Sinestro off down his... She writes him off as dead. 
pull out the third arrow. <clears throat> he seems resourceful. Does anybody want these things? I'm starting a collection, it seems. How hurt are you, Orzo? I'm fine now. You guys did some work. Between hey, you, I, the you healed like healing. 20 points of damage. Yeah, between you and the Dark Elf healing, you guys brought him back up pretty quick. Okay. Um, I kind of don't want to go that way. I kind of want to see what happens over there, so I'm going to go this way. Alright, as you're marching down that way, we're going to say, um, Sinestra, as you make your way down the narrow passageway, it's roughly 10 feet high in most places, though at times it shrinks down to barely being 6 foot high, and you have to kind of crouch down in parts to safely make it through without bumping your head. There are rough spurs of rock and broken bones protruding out of the walls that are coated with dark and dried blood. Perfect. Can I see any further? Uh, yeah, if you peer into the room here, we'll say you see that much. From what you can see, the room has got um, it's Looks fairly irregularly shaped. It's you know, there's rock, there's cracks and rocks along the wall, and what looks to be um, fissures that have developed at some point. Perfect. I'm going to here. Can I do a coin flip to decide which way I'm gonna go? It, just uh, yeah, just do roll whatever you want to do, and we'll do high or low. If you want to roll something, otherwise just pick a direction. Guess I'm going right. All right, so the coon is moving right with the rest of the crew. Galasaur and Thalon are heading off to the right here. Uh, all right, we're at the bend. Does Thalon see anything? <coughs> As you come to the the bend here and peer into the roughly hewn squarish room, you see piles of broken shattered bones, remnants of past victims or failed experiments, you're not quite sure which. Uh, there are rusted, tattered, rusted weapons, tattered and torn bits of garments and clothing in here. Beyond that, you really don't see anything in this room. Alright. Uh, Scalar, sir, I want to cast Detect Magic. Alright, you cast Detect Magic and beyond the item is being held by your companions around you, you sense nothing in the room itself. Alright, nothing interesting outside of uh, being very disgusting over here, so the only option is worth a psycho um, uh, psycho. Alrighty, so you're making your way back over. Um, your dark elf friend is just kind of waiting in the middle of this hall here for you guys should make a uniform decision as to where you're going. Uh, can I see any more? Uh, yeah, we'll have you take a look around the room here. Yeah. Perception check. Perception check! Wow, you rolled a d20. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So standing Wonder. in this room here and looking around, what you see are... It's a... Um... It's a roughly star-shaped cavern. There are clefts along its walls. Um, there are really only two paths in this cavern that look that you may be able to squeeze down. Um, going to the... Uh, we're going to call that your... What the hell the directions on this map? That's a you guys probably shouldn't just walk in here. You can't see any of this. So on the north side of the cave, from where you're facing your immediate right, there's a path that stretches off leading into the darkness. And there's Perfect. one across the cave to your left, again, leading off into the darkness. There are several fissures and cracks that creep along the walls that dig deeper into the darkness. And none of them look to be wide enough or deep enough for you to traverse. Eldritch Blast. I grab the wizard's hat and cast light on it. Hooray. Now we can see. Oh, the dark elf is just kind of like keeping 
taking up the rear and making sure no skeletons come and ambush you from behind again. I mean, I'm, I'm throwing Eldritch Blast down there. You're throwing Eldritch Blast down there? Yeah, down there. <laughs> All right. So you blast Eldritch Blast down the cave. You shoot down the cave. You hear a rasp of, What the fuck was there? I'll get you! I'll get you! Well, I know where I'm going. <laughs> so, uh, before anything happens, I'm throwing Cloud of Daggers right there. All right, so you've invoked Cloud of Daggers into that hallway. Yep. Okay. It appears to be nothing is coming down your path. That's fine. How long are you going to wait? Uh, I, I'm going to keep throwing Eldritch Blasts until whatever is down there comes and comes at us. So, well, we'll just keep going. <laughs> and as, as you continue to bombard the cave with Eldritch Blasts, um, you hear nothing more coming from down that cave beyond the random rumbling of wherever the hell your Eldritch Blast is impacting along the rocky foot tra train down that way. Your clot of Diagris has now long since faded. All right, I'm going. Uh, I'll follow. The dark goes, I'm gonna just uh, I'll keep watch here, make sure nothing gets up behind you. I'm gonna stay with the dark elf. <laughs> All right, what else do I see? <laughs> All right, as you make your way down the hall, oh, let me see here. Perception. Perception oh. checks. Oh no. Making my way down the hall, walking fast, tripped on a rock, oh my god, my knee. So as you continue to walk down the hall, it appears from what you can see where you're staying to open up into a larger cavern. Well, I'm oblivious to whatever's happening, so I'm going to keep going. And I'm just going to keep checking things. More vision. <laughs> All right, as you approach the end of the hall, looking into the room here, you see what appears to be doo -doo -doo, two small chests sitting in the middle of the room. Eldritch Blast. You're going to blast the chest? One of them. One on the right. It's roll your damage. You line up and Release your Eldritch Blast at the chest. It careens into the front left corner of the chest. There's a crack of wood and splatters against the back wall. You've blown away about half of the box. All right. I'm going to walk up, and I'm looking into the box. I'm not opening it. I'm looking into it. All right. How many people are going forward here with you? I'm just watching. So you're watching from the edge? Yeah. Alright, as you open the box, and just... <laughs> bits of wood break away, and the lid kind of just falls off the... behind the box. There's nothing in this one. It's empty. Perfect. I'm going to ignore the other box, and I'm going in here, into this doorway. It's not a doorway, it's just a people. It's a little people. There's a little hole. As you approach the people. And I'm looking. However, you need to roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, wonderful. All right. Here's my dex save throw. Is it there? Yay. Um, As you approach the people, you hear a raspy voice go, Leave my shit alone, you little fuck! Get out of here! <laughs> and then, <coughs> the ceiling above you. <coughs> And some rocks appear to shake loose and fall onto you. You take two points of bludgeoning damage as you go uh, and splay yourself against the wall, avoiding the brunt of it. <laughs> Perfect. It crushes the remaining chest. So, can we get through this? No, you cannot get through there. There's just, just a, a peephole. There's a narrow slit in the wall that's maybe four inches or so squared. All right. Just running right back down the hallway with my uh, expeditious retreat. Boom, Other boom, way, boom, guys. Boom, boom, boom. 
Well, oh, that sounded uh, fortuitous. Did you find anything up there? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, two chests, both of them. One that had nothing in it, I guess, and the other one, someone decided there's Humanoid voice probably coming from the other path. I see. All right. Next. <laughs> I'd like to try to stop him. Nope. Can't stop me. What are you going to roll to stop him? How First are you going to stop him? First to grapple. To sleep. All right, you're going to attempt to grapple him? All right, yeah. awesome. Roll the strength check because he tries to zip past you. Minus three, eleven. Right, so you need to roll uh, an acrobatics if you want to evade his grasp. Uh, what is that? Three. So you get plus three to your roll. Motherfucker. Yeah, as you try and run past him, he grabs your sleeve. And what are you saying to him as you're grabbing onto him? Now, now listen here. I do not care what you do with your own life, but you're putting others at risk. Now please, just slow down. <laughs> Feel free to leave. I'm going to keep going. Well, well he's got I got to get, get out of his now. I got to get out of his grapple. Yeah. So, I'm out. Uh, looks like Galasaur mm. is making his way past you and Thalon. I'm going to shrug him off. Go. Motherfucker. You going to let him go? Yeah. All right, as you let him go, um since you were attempting to struggle, I need you to make an athletics check. <laughs> He lets you go, you catch yourself on the stone wall and ugh, balance yourself up on your feet again. Alright, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> do we see anything here? What do we see? Alright, well, currently in front of you is Thalon and Galasaur. They are basically blocking the path, and preventing you from proceeding any further. As far hey, as you get guys the way. can see, going around this little bit of the path here, it just kind of reaches down and appears to curve off again into the darkness. Now I'm getting impatient. I'm trying to squeeze past him. You're going to try and squeeze past him? Make an athletics yeah. check. All right, perfect. Yet you managed to nimbly squeeze through. Yes! Can I catch I'm him? going! Yeah, if you want to do a grapple check, go ahead. Roll a strength check. Plus four for Gallus. Yeah, he's already made an athletics check check attempting to get through you so he's kind of already trying to worm his way through you and just as you reach for him he's like no and just <laughs> all right i'll call out and say if you get if you start him a fight with someone i'm not saving that's fine that's fine what do i see all right as you come into the around the bend here looking around this jagged and crumbling pathway before you it appears to once again open up into a larger cavern. I know what I'm gonna do. <coughs> Eldritch blast. You're gonna Eldritch blast into it? In down the cavern. <laughs> Alright, as you Eldritch blast down the cave, you manage to just barely nick the right hand wall before it opens up into the cavern. Damn it. Let's try this again. Is anybody else taking an action or are you just letting him stumble ahead here? I'm letting him stumble ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, are you... Yeah. So you're winging another Elder's Blast into the cave here? Yep, yep, yep. Alright, as you come forward here, you're... Dark vision expanding how far you can see. And you just, what are you aiming at? Just into the darkness? I'm just right through the gap and then straight on through as far as I can go. Alright, you hear the Elder Splash go from rumble against the wall. As you do so, a. Um, <clears throat> you hear the scraping and clattering of bones in the fire. Cavern. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to squeeze back past uh, Gauss here. I want to kick him forward. <laughs> Make a strength check, Galasir. Ten. Athletics check for Sinestra. 
Yeah, he just, just squeezes past you, Galister. He's now standing between you and Thallon. Can I reach back and use and grab him and put him back in front of me? If you want, yeah, you make a strength check. Fourteen. If you want to resist it, you need to make an athletics check. Woo! That's with all your modifiers in it already? Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah. He grabs you by your scruff. Fuck it. I'm, shoves I'm just you. going up. All right, you're going oh, up. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to be in front of you here. Yeah, I mean, you just shoved him forward. Now, now, now I'm in front of you. So he's 10 foot ahead of you. He's, he's right there in front of you now. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, yay. <laughs> Hooray! As you guys are arguing, skeletons begin to pour forward. Why are you guys so loud? What? I can't hear you. Speak louder! Oh, man. Uh... Well, uh Eldritch Blast. <laughs> Yeah, you used your turn already, buddy. It's going to be... Uh, I know, I'm joking. It's Stalin's turn at this point. Yo. Uh, probably can't really do anything. I mean, he can attempt to squeeze through past Galliser. Yeah, it ain't worth the trouble right now. All right. I'll pass. So you're just going to pass your action now? Yep. Okay. Let's see, da -da -da -da. that brings us to Orzol. <clears throat> what, what's going on? That'll be it. The dark elf looks at you in the cool and shrugs. Couldn't fucking tell you. That pasty eyed Asimer, whatever the hell he's calling himself, keeps running ahead. You really don't want to know, old man. All right. That's, uh, uh, it's your turn, know. Lama Lacuna. I stand silently and ponder the decisions, all the decisions of my life that had left me to be stuck between a dark elf and an old man in a cave somewhere. And I curse my existence. That is all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Does the curse take effect? No. Darn. <laughs> With a sigh, the dark elf figure steps forward to stand next to Thalon and appears to just drop the weapons in his hand as he again draws his hands back in an action to make a bow, as if he's firing a bow, and lets loose an attack, firing an arrow. Which pins a bolt of energy into the skeleton in front, directly in front of you, Sinister here. <clears throat> the arrow just kind of plinks off the bones. It appears to have done a little bit of damage, but not a lot. As it comes into view, you can see that these little skeletons here are, well, they're the remains of skeletons they are tattered bits some of them the one directly in front of you looks to be just a torso the one a little further back just at your edge of your vision is a hand attached to a torso with no skull on it just kind of like uh, slowly dragging itself forward uh, bum, 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 bum. that brings us to gala sir i'm going to move right here and i want to toss some uh sinister farther into the cave Are you attempting to resist this? Yes, I'm gonna resist it. <laughs> no! You failed miserably. He grabs you by the scruff and throws you forward. You fall prone in front of a skeleton. Uh, doing so, it licks an attack of opportunity. Great. <laughs> uh, and because you are prone and has advantage of the attack, thankfully it rolls low. And it, it's just a torso kind of Brings himself up on his elbows and lurches forward to you, trying to rake you with both his hands. Once it falls to the ground, they both oh, so we both wide. have the same. We both have the same position. Yeah, basically, yeah. Oh, perfect. 
the attack Look misses. In the eye. It is now your turn, Sinister. It's my turn. All right, I'm staying prone. I'm going to go sniper position, and I'm going to throw an Eldritch Blast right into his face. All right, well, since you're right now, you're, I assume you're aiming at the one in front of you, right? Oh, yes. Okay, well, you're rolling a disadvantage because you're within melee combat. That's fine. Also, your XP retreat has fallen off of you. You lost concentration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So, flat. Is that... You gotta roll another time because you got disadvantage. Alright, well, the 12 definitely hits it. Okay, okay. Oof. Is you... Reach forward in your sniper position, and fire off the just blast. The scout just goes, Pfft. the balls to a pile of bones and dust, skittering back and hitting something at the edge of your. Well, now your vision's expanded now. Yeah, sixty feet. Oh shit! Sixty. I say, feet. <laughs> I say, thanks for the assist. So it splatters against the edge of the stone shit. table. Wonderful. I'm staying prone. Alrighty. Uh, so you're just going to stay there on the ground? Uh, yeah. Alright, cool, 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 cool. I like it. I know you do. You just added another two zombies. Well, yeah, they're coming out of the darkness. Wonderful. Uh, this one is attempting to sneak by. This one is walking forward. Um, bum, 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 bum. That brings us back to the top of the round. Dark Elf is going to walk forward. Uh, he's going to come up to you. What the hell are you doing? Get up, you moron! I'm snipering! He reaches down. Are you attempting to resist him pulling you up? I'm just going to go wet noodle. Alright, so he <laughs> reaches down and grabs you by your collar and lifts you up. So you're about five feet off the ground. <laughs> are you still remaining limp? Uh, I mean, if my feet are dangling, I'm gonna land on them. He lets you go. Okay. Alright, so I'm standing up now. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And then he uses his bonus action to cast his oh-so-wonderful spell of Dancing Lights. Which enlightens, lights up the room a little more for Mr. Ozoho arranging them in a semicircle around the back end of the room here, illuminating the rest of the area. He summons four globes of yellowish light. And they just go and float out into the room. I don't think I've got anything I could use. So yeah, we'll use this. And just go bloom. Last one coming up along the wall over here, lighting up the area and making it easier for those with out dark vision to see. Um, that brings us to Lacuna's turn. I take a deep breath and tug slightly on the old wizard's elbow. I don't know what's happening, but I think we need to get closer and start helping. Are you going to come with me? Mm hmm. Yes. Might as well. So we're going to make our way <laughs> up front. Can, uh, do I need a roll to squeeze by? No, there's um, plenty of room now. Okay. You can make so it I'm just gonna... to the end opening here if that's where you want to go. Right here? Yep. That's as far as you can go. All right. I take a really breath, pull out the dagger, and... Aim directly for the one that's the green shirted one that's directly in front of me. Alrighty, Let's... make your attack roll. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna hit. It doesn't take much to hit these guys. Uh, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to see what I have to roll for damage. It's uh, 1d4. You walk forward and you line up your shot and you go, swing your dagger at it once again. It bounces off the skull and the brittle 
Or sorry, this one didn't have a skull. It just bounces in between the rib cage. She just kind of haphazardly knocks things apart. And just, it looks as though you just managed to break it into pieces somehow as your dagger clatters to the floor among the shattered and broken bones. This is cool. It is now Orzal's go. I'm so proud of my little tiefling. <laughs> you can make it up to uh, just behind the dark elf. That's where you, if, as far as you can go, Orzal. All right. Uh, I don't think I'm tall enough to really shoot past these guys. So. I mean, you can I'll... make an attack roll, but it's going to be a disadvantage in anything directly in front of you because people are yeah. in your way. I'll hold a firebolt just in case I do get a clear shot. <laughs> All right. This zombie here is going to walk forward and make an attack roll on Sinestra. Uh, let's see what's your armor class at here. 16. Nope, he misses you. <coughs> Excuse me. Can I can I just call his mom uh an elderberry eater? If that's what you want to do, go for it. He okay. looks at you a little confused because it is an undead zombie. This <laughs> one walks forward and makes his attack at Lacuna. Lacuna Matata. I roll well on my dice tray. Oh Clearly God. I'm saved. That's not gonna hit you. He swings at you and he's gonna go. Ah! You clasp on the shoulder of Sinestra and just pull yourself out of the way of his reach. Oh, bu -bu 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 this skeleton here is going to scratch his way forward and he's going to make an attack at Lacuna. Rude. <laughs> They're just forward. He goes, and swings at you. You just kind of like, again, skittering back in your frightened state. Just step outside of range of his attack. He ah! misses you. Fouling goes again. Poor Kalliser. Uh, that one's not that strong, so... Ooh, did, 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 did. Yeah, that one's got a 16 strength. He's pretty strong, actually. Uh, okay, I'll attempt to, mo to lift him of the old man up. Alright. Roll a strength check? Oh, yeah. Beat it. So, you lean down and basically you give him a foothold. And you raise Orzo up. So now you are staring over the heads of the three fellow adventurers in front of you. You're maybe four feet or so off the ground. Nice. He's a wizard jockey. Can I take this opportunity to shoot the skeleton? Yeah, you can hit any of the three in front of you. Got a clear shot to all of them now. Oh. In that case, I'll go to the one that's trying to munch on Lacuna. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna hit. Yeah. Alright. As you uh, study yourself in Thalon's haphazard lift, bracing your hand against the wall, you kind of lean around and fire off your firebolt and it wings the zombie in his left shoulder. You kind of uh, lurches to the side a bit before steadying himself again. Fantastic. Good job down there. That'll do it. Alright. Um, ba -ba -bum. That's going to come to Mr. Skeleton's turn. He's going to scramble forward. Swing at Lacuna. Let's see. Lacuna Matata. Yeah, that's going to hit you, Lacuna. Ow. He don't do much damage, thankfully. I lied. He rolled high. You take five <laughs> points of um, piercing damage as his skeletal fingers rake against your legs. Ow! That hurts. I need those. Okay. For a living. <laughs> the other zombie stumbles and lurches forward, swinging at Sinestra. And he swings wild and misses. Okay, that brings us to Sinestra's turn. Hmm. Spiked fist wraps punch to the face. Let's do this. All right. He 
Yeah, that's definitely going to hit. Okay. As you swing wildly, bringing your fist into connection. Are you aiming at any particular point, or are you just swinging at him? I'm, I'm taking his jugular. Right, as you swing at his neck, your hand comes away with a gory, gnarly mess of decaying and necrotic flesh just kind of clinging to it. Ew, gross. gross. I shake my hand off like, ugh, that's disgusting. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. That brings us to Galliser. Uh, I assume I can't move forward. Cause... Oh, sorry about that. I meant to uh, mute myself as I coughed on disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I assume Galliser can't move forward at all. <clears throat> I mean, you can... Uh... Attempt to make an acrobatics check to squeeze your way through the crowd if that's what you want to do. Uh, sure. All right, go ahead and roll. Oh well, there you go. Oh yeah, you easily just like you kind of like yeah yeah no, no, just, don't mind me. I'm just gonna slip through here. There you are, and you pop out to the left of the kuna. Okay, I'm gonna smack. That guy. Alrighty, roll your attack. What's your modifier on that? Uh, plus seven, that brings you to 14. Yeah, that just hits. Twelve points of damage, nice. She. Did you bring your axe down upon his rotten ass, he's uh, kind of howls in pain at you you cleave off his right arm and it falls twitches to the ground alrighty, that's going to bring Galliser to an end, back to the top of the round seeing what you did the dark goes, you should have taken his leg off and he draws his belt and aims for the one that you just cleaved um, let's see here, we're going to do, where the hell am I at Oh, yeah, that's going to hit. Mm. Yep, he just kind of <laughs> pins it to the ground. And it goes, <laughs> falls over dead. All right, Lacuna, your turn. This time, with my eyes open, I slash out at the skeleton in front of me again. Okay. And what's your modifier with the rapier? It's plus four, twelve. Yeah, that's a hit. So, one d eight. Oh, Jesus Christ. He <laughs> rolled a one. Add two to that brings a three. Thankfully, these broken and shattered half skeletons do not have much health to them. This, again, you just kind of like, and you slowly make your way through. You knock off one arm and then just kind of bat the head off to the side that careens against the cavern wall as the body falls lifeless. Hey. I turn slightly green and close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to Orzel. <clears throat> Good show. Uh, fireball. Is he still up on... Uh, oh, on we, never, we never said we put him down. Yeah, <laughs> he's just still up there. I can just imagine you just, like, sweating, breathing heavy, like, Dude, come on! Uh, well, Thalon's strength, he's easily able to lift, like, 500 pounds deadlift. Oh, jeez. I mean, you gotta remember, the strength Monster. score of these characters and this are just, they're fucking insane. Same. Kapow! Kapow! You 
blast another fireball into the zombie. It's, well, that one's falling prone on the ground. Oh, no, he got up again and attacked since. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He looks a little worse for the wear, but he's all right. Cool. All right. Uh, Thalon, back to your turn. Are you going to continue to lift this guy, or...? Um, I'm going to set him down. All right. Are you gingerly setting him down, or are you just dropping his ass? I'm gingerly setting him down. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So Break it's going to use... Break the old man's leg. It's going to use your bonus action to just set him down like that without trying to hurt him. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Can I see the skeleton, the last zombie from where I'm at? Uh, yeah, you could just barely see him peeking around the edge there. I will cast some of uh, my cantrip sacred flame on it. Alrighty, go ahead. Let's see, I believe that one is a... They need to make a dexterity saving throw against you. Yeah, he fails the saving throw. Do your damage. Two points of radiant damage lashes out against the zombie. Howls in what you assume to be pain as the radiant light flicks and licks up his body. As the flames briefly engulf him. Um, boom, boom, that brings us down to Sinestra's turn. Punchy, punchy, punchy. All right. Punchy, 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 No, punchy. <laughs> no, punchy. Oh, uh, no. No, with your modifiers, you miss. Oh, no, pun. All right, that brings us back to the Zombo's turn. Please, no punch at me. <laughs> Zombo going to punch you. No punchy. <laughs> Make sure I cut the stat blocks right for these things. <coughs> yep. Stay in the tray, you damn bow of dice. It's a good thing I did that. Um, you take seven points of bludgeoning damage as he just slams into you. Jesus fucking uh, Christ. Damn. You guys suck at this. He's <laughs> <laughs> the one who ran ahead. <laughs> Well, he's more of the one who got thrown at. <laughs> I tried to get out, man. I was gonna, I was gonna block off the corridor with another clot of daggers, and then, nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Galasaur's turn. Uh, I'm gonna walk right over here, and I'm going to attack him on the zombie's legs. All right. And natural twenty. Yeah. Oh, nice. Whew. Whew. That's gonna end him. Any fancy flourish you wanna do in killing this bastard? Eh, chop his legs off and then just start beating him mercilessly with the axe. <laughs> All right. So you cleave him at the knees and bring him down. And he's stuck most of the guy. He just. And bury your axe brutally into his back until it just it stops twitching. Alrighty. Now that you guys have dismembered the undead. What are you doing? I'm gonna go over here to this table and start hacking at the this body to make sure it doesn't get back up. <laughs> so as you come over to the table, there's no body there, it's just a collection of limbs and body parts. There's two heads sitting on one side of the table, three feet, a couple of arms, uh, a torso with nothing attached to it, and a large spool of silverish thread, and a rather garish-looking needle that's roughly the size of your finger sitting on the table next to it. Yeah, it looks so gross. I want to inspect the thread. Alrighty. You pick the thread up and you inspect it. It appears to be um, almost metallic in nature. It's silvery in color. Beyond that, um, if you want to know any further, do you have... I don't think you have Arcana as a skill, do you? Uh, I think I do. No, I do. Oh, no that's the Ellen. Does not have yeah, I don't. So. Nope. so I'm going to check all these bodies to try to find that dagger that someone threw earlier. 
Didn't she pick that up? Nope. No, she threw one another pile of bones. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Rummaging about the remains of the bodies here, you find um, a chipped, damaged sickle. Uh, it looks like it would break if you actually tried to do any serious damage or attack with it. Yeah. Um, you find Lacuna's dagger scattered among some broken bones and dust. There is a rotting hammer. Um, it's got a stone head on the end of a mallet with a, it's like I said, it's a rotting and decayed wooden handle on it. Uh, a couple other, just a rusted short sword and um, a club that looks to be fashioned out of something's bone. It's way too big to be that of a humanoid. I'm gonna toss Thalon the club and Lacuna the dagger. Thalon, are you taking this club from him? Uh, sure, I'll take the club. Okay, so you have a bone club now. Does Lacuna catch the dagger? She's kind of far away. Are you actually throwing it at her? I'm tossing it! Like, just... Oof. I'm not walking all the way over there to give her a dagger back. She wasn't smart enough to pick it up. Are you making... Are you trying to throw it at her, or just throwing it I'm not trying to hurt her with it, but it's flipping around. You know, she's got to catch it. Uh, all right, well, make, make an make attack it. roll, and Lacuna make an athletics roll. Oh, shit. Okay, what is my actual attack roll? Is it just... It's, what, it's what's, this. A, what's athletics? Is it 120? Yeah, it's 1d20 plus your... Uh, any bonus to your skills. Let me see here. Lacuna, you would have a plus one to your athletics rolls. Please, please roll some. <laughs> oh my god. Alrighty. Um, as he wings the dagger at you, you attempt to catch it. Uh, you miss, and the dagger is embedded in your leg. You take two points of piercing damage. Okay. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I bite down on my lip so hard that it starts to bleed as I try not to scream so loudly. <laughs> Just kind of grabbing at the dagger, trying to figure out if it's safe to remove from my leg. Why would you do that? Why would you leave it on the ground? It hurts! That's what you get for leaving it on the ground. Why are you throwing it? You're yelling at him. Um, Thalon, are you going over there? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going over there to see. I, I, have st I have stuff in medicine, so I might be able to remove it. Alright, so roll a d20 medicine check. Nope. Yeah, as you go to reach for the dagger of the dark elf, uh, seeing how you're approaching, you can't grab things. Let, let me have a look at that. I nod. Uh, he, I don't know if he's proficient. Oh yeah, no. Yes, he is. Uh, he reaches for the dagger and goes, There's really no way to do this. Um... He looks at you and goes, you have any healing left? Uh, uh, I do. I I can do it. I have. I can, I can do the spell. He nods at you and uh, puts a hand on your shoulder, grabs hold of the dagger and just yanks it out. Uh, I s stare really, really angrily at Sinestra. <laughs> Put my hand directly over the wound and cast a healing word. Yeah. Alrighty. See, uh, you'll be fine. <clears throat> roll your, I think it's 1d4 plus whatever the heck your modifier is. Lacuna uh, spells. Alright, you have to cast this at second level because that's the only spell slot you have left. That's my last, this is literally my last spell. Yeah, so it's 2d4. Okay, yeah, you did Plus, right. You got it. Yeah. Yep, so you recover 8 points. Alrighty, now that you have been patched up, uh, we've divvied you down a bone club. To the people that have dark vision, can we see more of the room? Can I pick up a rock and throw it at Sinestra's head? Yeah, you can do that. What do I need to roll? Light on the rock Make to an help. attack roll. So All right. One d twenty. Pick... Add your dex modifier to it. What is my dex modifier? Plus two. I okay. am totally trying to dodge this. Yeah, she misses. She tries to throw a rock at you and just skids past your head. I'm <sighs> just gonna chuckle. <laughs> 
All right, I'm looking around at this uh, at this room. Can I can I do an Arcana check? What do you want to Arcana check? Uh, this like stuff on this table here. On the table right there near you. Yeah. All right. So as you look at the table in front of you, there's a simple, similar spool of silver thread. Um, you know that this is used for various arcane rituals. Um, let's see here. What level are you? I don't think you have any of the spells that would pertain to this. No, you don't. Um, what particular spells it's used for, you're not familiar with, but you have seen this in passing. Um, you know that it's, like I said, used for various arcane rituals or spells. Uh, looking at the rather large garish needle tied to the end of it and the body surround you, you surmise that it's the whoever is inhabiting this cave has been using it to assemble the bodies before animating them to life. Nice. We got a necromancer on our hands. What else do we see at this cave, by the way? All right, well, uh, those of you with dark vision can see quite a bit further ahead here. Um, we're going to go up here to... Bloop, bloop, bloop. You said there was a sickle somewhere, right? It's... Oh, yeah. I left it on the ground. <laughs> it's back among the grounds. It's like I said, the sickle is... Um, it looks like it's way well past its years of use. Is it around where I'm at? Yeah. Uh, can I pick up a sickle and cast light on it to use it as sort of a makeshift lamp? Yep, you definitely can. All right, then that's what I'll do to help <laughs> without dark vision. All right, so pick it up. You light it up. Um, those of you with dark vision, you can see as far out as the edge of the that sight point there. Um, to help you along in your fun little way, uh, the dark elf figure again reaches his hand out, mutters his little incantation, and summons four little blips of light further into the cave to illuminate it. I could have done that before I cast light on the sickle. I mean, you you weren't on the same page. You were back behind everybody. He's, yeah. He doesn't have eyes in the back of his head. This, I was this... nursing my wound, Sinestra. Should have caught your dagger. Sinestra. Should have caught your dagger. Alright. Um, bum, 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 bum. As you move forward, the dark elf says, Halt. There's something further in the darkness. Eldritch Blast. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I think I'm... <laughs> I'm hurting a little bit, so I'm not a. Uh, I'm not thinking I'm gonna keep doing this craziness. All right. Um, he is going to. We're gonna do a perception check for him. Hooray! It's, looks to be a table up ahead. Um. More undead. It's maybe somebody near it. How do you wanna proceed? Uh, I kind of look back at uh, Sinestra and just kind of shrudge and go, yeah, probably the hard way. You haven't been too quiet yet, so I suppose we shouldn't start now, right? They already know we're here. All right, all right. Are you moving forward? Guys? How far can, how far can we start? I'm moving now? forward. All right, as you begin to march forward, he motions ahead of you, and the fairy fire lights drift 20 feet forward, illuminating the path a little further ahead of you. What's to our right? Um, as you look to your right, and we'll give you these. Okay. So as you come in further into the passage, it opens up into an enormous cavern that is looking further back uh, past where you're at now, has begun to be illuminated by several guttering torches set in sconces along the wall. Well, they don't illuminate the room. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they don't illuminate the room. They give you like a 10 foot radius around the edges of the room. So you can't see what's in the center of it, but you can see, like, along the walls here. Okay. Um, bleep, 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 bleep. Oh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. Clear that path out there so you guys can see off to your right. Um, 
beyond the stone tables behind you where some sick experiments have been going on. Along the western side of the wall here, there's a stone stairs that climb up along the wall. Um, they end closer to the ceiling, and from what you gather uh, between what you can see over the edge of the steps and where you previously were, this is probably where the voices were coming from before when the rocks fell on Sinestra's head in that room full of chests. Yeah, we're going the right way then. All right, I'm going all the way over here. I'm keeping an eye on the Sinestra beside in case he decides to injure someone else in the party. All right, Lacuna, as you move forward with your improvised torch, illuminating the area further, things light up. Hooray! Your dark elven friend is moving his way along the wall here, bow still in hand. We're going to do. I guess we just keep going until. As you guys make your way further into the cave, a bright light goes foof and illuminates the area. Oh shit! Wonderful. This figure here in green robes steps to the side around the bench a little bit, still obscuring himself and roughly half covered behind this table covered with crude instruments. <laughs> You were supposed to lay under those rocks. Would have been a lot easier if you had. <laughs> Get them, you fools! He turns and begins to run away. What a loser. You guys gonna do it? Hey, don't worry, we'll kill him soon enough. All right. So he's gone. He ran off. Deep wow, he moved deep. really quick. Yeah, he ran. Oh, ass. While he's I running off, the skeletons walk forward. Yeah. And they oh. begin their attack against you guys. So two are going to swing at Galliser, one's going to swing at Sinestra, and there's one in the back with a bow. So first we're going to be Sinestra. Um, yeah, that's going to hit you, buddy. Woo! Hooray! Uh, he raises a rusted-looking hand axe over his head and brings it swinging down on top of you. You take five points of slashing damage. He Brings it across your chest. Ah, now I have tetanus. Uh, so you have the skeletons coming at you. One of them has got a rusted-looking, half-broken longsword. He swings at you, Galliser. You just easily bat it aside. And the other one is holding a wooden shield and a fairly decent-looking um, base. It's not rusted or anything, at least. Again, swings it down at you, and again, you just kind of knock it aside. And lastly, the one behind us with the bow turns and fires at Sinestra. And you are going to take some more damage. You take eight points of piercing damage as an arrow embeds itself in your chest. Now I am going to look like Mr. Stark. Sorry. Uh, uh, you guys don't know who that is. Uh, it's okay. Alrighty, and we're going to start at the top of the round at that one. Um, let's see, that brings a dark elf into his turn. As he raises his bow and he's going to roll his attack at you. Hooray, at one of them. Oh, what the hell is the modifier for his bow? Something stupid. He makes his attack roll. He rolls a nine and poof, fires wide. Because he got a one. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's have fun with this. Hey, nobody got any damage. It ricochets off the table behind you. Um, okay, that brings it down to Lacuna's turn. I move. Here, and I attempt to toss my handy dandy dagger at the unshield, uh, the skeleton that does not have a shield in front of it. Is that Galasir? Yep. <clears throat> Alrighty, roll your attack. Oh, thank god. Uh, it goes, 
colors off into the darkness behind you. Well, <laughs> that one's gone. You I were thought you learned your lesson. From me. You know what? <laughs> Shut up, Sinestra. I hope one of your elder blasts hit you in the face. <laughs> it's always well, it's your turn now. Amazing. Step over here, and I'll aim at the archer. Okay. With a firebolt. Alrighty, will we attack? Oh yeah, that's gonna hit. <laughs> oh, one third damage. <laughs> it goes. <laughs> and now he was now focused on you. I swear that's that never happens. <laughs> that one, it's your turn. That's what they all say. All okay. Now. I'm going to cast second level healing word on Sinestra. What? What for? Not worth it. Alrighty. So I believe that's um, 2d4 plus whatever your wisdom modifier is. So plus 3 for you. So, Sinestra, you recover five points of health. Wonderful. You're alive. All right. That you still couldn't have, your... have gone any better. <laughs> you still have your action, Thalon. What's that okay. bitch now, Sinestra? Less than uh, what I need. <laughs> just make sure that you can survive slightly less. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you used your bonus action uh, to heal him. You have a standard action. Remaining. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna go right here and attack this guy on his legs. You should be gonna have his legs? Yep. Alright, roll your attack. Uh, let's see, do you have any modifiers for that? No. Uh, plus five, I think. Yep, so that's gonna hit. Swing low under his shield, you go whack, and you hear a sickening crack as his leg just goes and shatters, and he just falls prone to the ground. That skeleton then turns and attempts to swing at you while prone. Um, so he misses you, and again, just falls flat on the ground, and he's just trying to crawl his way toward you, nipping at your feet. Um, let's see, that brings us to Sinestra's turn. You're muted, Zen. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not moving out of range or anything, but I am doing this. And I'm going to use Fade Presence. Fade Presence? Fade Presence. Oh, fade so presence. I can either charm or, or make them frightened of me if they fail a wisdom saving throw. So... I I say charm. All right, so you're going to use your ability to for fate presence. Yep. What are you saying to this thing to attempt to charm it? Oh, it's everything within fifteen. It causes uh, one creature in a ten foot cube from you to make a wisdom saving throw DC fifteen. Each creature in a ten foot. Oh, each creature ten foot. Yeah, so it's the two of them. I'm gonna say. Hey there, big boys. <laughs> Let me show you around town. <laughs> Look toward you. If a skeleton could have a confused face, this would be it. <laughs> you get a feeling that. But do they? Your do charm they... spell doesn't work on undead. What? Bullshit! They got it. They got to do this wisdom saving throw. Not when they're immune to charm. They're undead, buddy. Nah, it's fine. Unless you have 
a spell that specifically says charm or control undead, they're immune to it. <laughs> nah. <laughs> All right, I'm using my bonus action. I'm, I'm <laughs> walking away. What are you doing? Oh, uh, never mind. I can't. Damn it. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Do you have anything else you can do? Nope. Uh. Yes. Yes. I'm pulling out my other punchy dagger. Uh. <laughs> what sure. the. The spiked fist wraps. Pulling on my other one, because now I'm dual wielding them. Alright, so you have your two fisty, spiky fist wraps on your hands now. Alright, cool. That'll end your turn. Yep, Uh, that's it. That's all I got. On that, the skeleton you tried to charm turns to you and tries to swing his weapon at you. He rolls a one. And goes, and just kind of stumbles past you and he's now standing here. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you liked me anyway. Uh, see here. Um, this skeleton here, deciding that you're an idiot for trying to charm him, turns and comes at you. As he's leaving your space galaxy, you get an attack of opportunity on him. I, I'm pretty sure I missed. No, Did you, you didn't one? miss. I rolled a one. No. Oh, man. I'm going to die. You try to <laughs> swing at it. Uh, instead of hitting that one, you swing down and you smash the one that was prone on the ground. And it just goes, just kind of falls lifeless. So you've managed to kill the other one, but not the one going towards Sin. <laughs> it marches toward you, Sin, and attempts to swing at you, but misses. Aw, they do like me. See, guys, my charm worked. <laughs> I don't think it's the charm you want. It's, uh, Galliser, it's not your turn. Uh, is there a way that I can tackle, um, this undead into... Th- so you want to try and charge the one that's directly to the right of Sin into the one behind him? Yeah. Um, bum, 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 bum. You can attempt to shove it, but you don't have the proper feats, quote unquote, to do what you're asking for. Okay, I'll do a shove. All right, so you need to make a strength check. Yeah, that ain't happened. Hmm. You. Yeah, it did because are... he rolled a one. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so you go forward and you uh, let's see, Gallus has got a shield, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you go forward and you forward, raise your shield one hand. You and just shove it into him. He goes, it just kind of falls back, stumbling into the other skeleton. And let's see if they make their saves. Um, no. And that one does. So as he stumbles into it, the skeleton that is staying just ahead of Sin just kind of goes, smacks him aside and knocks him off. So he stumbles away from you, but he's still standing. The one skeleton is falling prone to the ground. There, none of them are near you anymore, though. So there's that. <laughs> Wonderful. The dark elf seeing all this comes. What the hell are you two doing? <laughs> Steps forward, takes <laughs> aim at the archer. Makes his roll. Oh yeah, that's gonna hit. And then he's gonna roll his damage. Stupid powerful bow. Jesus Christ, you fucking damn near max the rolls. Yeah, so his arrow goes and blasts the skeleton into dust. The archer is dead. Hooray! Hooray! Uh, it's now your turn, Lacuna. I run up to this skeleton and try to slightly more skillfully slash at him with my rapier. Alright, he's on the ground, so you have advantage since he's prone. Which means you roll d20 twice, take the higher of the two. Hey, look, you got the same thing. Huh. <laughs> Definitely hits. <laughs> <coughs> so 
so it's 1d8 plus 2 for your damage. So that brings you to 6 damage. You whip your, your rapier down and just gonna knock him around a bit. He looks a little worse for the wearer as his bones became a little chipped and cracked, but he's still alive. Looks like I'm trying to mix him in a mixing bowl. Yeah, it's, it's fall apart. <laughs> Alright, it's uh, Orsal's turn now. I look over and I say, what are you, making pancakes? Mmm, pancakes. <laughs> I elbow him really hard in the side. Oh, please do not die. Did he take damage from that? <laughs> you take one point of damage. <laughs> oh, you... Oh! Cool. I'm gonna firebolt the shielded one. Alright. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna hit. Two points of damage against him. Your firebolt bounces across his bones. He staggers a bit, but he's still standing. I'll end my turn with a... Get in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's see, the skeleton's gonna swing it, sin again. Oh, dude, he rolled 20. <laughs> oh, shit. Hit me! <laughs> You're taking 10 points of slashing damage as he brings his rusted axe back at you again. Oh, boy. I definitely have tetanus now. <laughs> that brings us to Thalon's turn. Uh... Hmm. If you hadn't had stabbed me, I could have healed you by now. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm going to move right. Look, I didn't stab you. You suck at catching. And I'm going to cast my last healing spell on uh, Sinestra. Healing level one, law, first level healing word. All right. So you burn your last healing spell. Roll your heal out. I hope it heals for like 0. 0.5. He <laughs> rolled the lowest he could roll. <laughs> you recover four hit points, Sinestra, as he whispers encouraging words into your ear. You know, you're not that It'll great be at this. I'm, uh, you know, I do worship that, and you are right in store right now. <laughs> He's just trying to prolong it for a juicier taste afterwards. Look, I'm just looking for the ding-dong ditch. I'm not trying to, you know, walk into his house or anything. <laughs> he has tea all made for you. <laughs> oh, that, I don't like tea. It's your turn, Sinestra. <laughs> all right, expeditious retreat. <laughs> You're going to cast my, my spell. And I'm, I'm fucking out of here. Alright, so as you cast Expeditious Retreat, you elect our attacks of opportunity. Yeah. Thankfully, both of them miss you. Wonderful. I am going as <laughs> back all the way to here. I think it's as far back as you can go. Oh, I mean, I can move 60 feet. Expeditious. But uh, I'm going to stick around here. <laughs> Yeah, you could go a little further back if you wanted to. But alright, um, so he has peace the fuck out. Uh, seeing as <laughs> he point. has left, the skeleton that turns his attention toward Lacuna. <laughs> I'll trade you! Lacuna, you take three points of piercing damage as a rusted short sword makes its way through your armor. Ugh. Wait, is it a sword or an axe? This The guy with the shield has an axe. The other guy's got a sword. Oh, okay. Talking about the sword guy. Got yep. it. Oh, man. That brings us to Galasaur's turn. Okay. I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to attack Mr. Skeleton with the shield. Attack him with your shield? 
Right. No, nah, I'm going to attack the one with the shield. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's going to hit <clears throat> with your modifiers. Yep, that'll do him in. You just kind of go, flap. Bring your axe through him and sever his spine and send the skull and the leg cattling down to the floor. Poor dude, he dead. Oh. He gone. Um, let's see here. Your dark elf friend makes his way forward. Takes his boat, lines up a shot to the remaining skeleton. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, that's gonna hit. Helps if I type the formula in right. Hooray for damage! As an arrow lashes through his skull and just poof, turns into dust, his body stumbles around for a moment before just kind of falling into a pile of bones. Things all dead. Nice. My first order of business is to walk straight up, up here. To walk straight up there? Yep. <clears throat> As you walk by, the Dark Elf grabs you by your arm and says, Hold on now. You're looking a touch dead. Anybody else here looking a little messed up? Who needs healing? I think it's just me. Uh, Yeah, you took the blonde. So just Sinestro needs healing? I think so. Well, it's 1056, so... Can we have a rest so we can reset our spells and I can be not so useless? <laughs> it would take if a full only... rest to get your spells back. You have to what? You would have to rest eight hours to reclaim your spells. We're not sitting here for eight hours. No <laughs> way. I'll continue to be useless, son. Uh, if we have a short rest, uh, that would help. Probably. Uh, the, as the Dark Elf grabs your arm, he whispers a few mutters of incantation into his breath, and you recover ten hit points. Yay! I'm no longer looking inside Death's window to see if he's bathing. I mean, wait. Making tea, sorry. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> he had a hot tub all ready for you. Well, that bit concluded. Are we continuing further? Steps to the right here. We can go deeper. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to here and see what I can see with a perception check. <laughs> you see Oh my god. The walls of a cave. Yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna try to make one too. I think uh Sinestra may have hit his head a little hard. You see the walls of a cave too. <laughs> you also see the walls of a cave. <laughs> You know, is some of the light on my axe still gummo? Go. Nobody's casting a different concentration spell, so yeah, it's still there. I'm gonna go into that cave. At this, this... point, I am defaulting to be about 15 feet behind Galasir. <laughs> right, so wherever approach... he goes, I'm following. What are these? What are what? Stairs. Are stairs. Can we go up the stairs? Go for it. If you want, climb the steps. I'm gonna check it out. Alright, Lacuna, as you make your way up these cruelly hewn stone steps, um, loose rocks and rubble clutter, clutter the path as you make your way up. Um, slow going to ensure you don't slip and fall off them back into the cavern below. Uh, upon reaching the top of the steps, you find yourself staring into a empty room. There's a small little cutoff in the wall that looks into a room that's covered with 
broken wooden debris. Um, there's a lever on the wall to your left, right at the top of the steps, and is in the down position, and there are rubble and stone just scattered about the chamber in front of you. Old man wizard, are you coming? <clears throat> yes, sir. You said there's a lever, right? Yep. That's your st there's a peephole there, just kind of like it's a cutout window looking into the room. Uh, mm -hmm. To the left of the peephole, there's a lever that's in the down position. Can I cast another perception check just to see if there's anything obviously fishy? Um, I mean, from the previous explanation that Sinestri gave you of the room before, you pretty much assume that this is the room that he walked into where rocks fell on his head. You're just on the other side of the people. Oh, okay. You assume the lever is what was used to drop the rocks down onto the cave, the room. Well, I guess we're making our way back down now. Walking yeah. not very fast. Did those of us up here see more of the cave? Uh, yeah, as you make your way forward, the light on your axe illuminates a little further for Galaser to see. That's about as far as you can see. The cave just appears to go deeper. What can I see? <clears throat> Those of you with dark vision can see a little further deeper into the cave, into what appears to be a split. Um, I have to end it here. I'm really tired, and I am halfway through this hell shift, so... I need. I actually do need to go. It's eleven oh one. You guys want to pick it up here Friday then, or you rest if you want to continue with? This is a good uh, spot. If you guys yeah, this is a good problem, spot. That's fine. This is actually a really good spot for us to to stop because we're about to have some problems. We have no healing spells. <laughs> we have no healing spells. So we still have it. No, you have no healing spells. Okay. Nobody's taking the time to talk to this fucking dark elf that's traveling with you guys. Yeah, I just figure he's... <laughs> he's just there. I just figure he's like a legendary badass and that like, if we all die, he's still gonna make it through this, so I just... Yeah, whatever. We will be the first to die. <laughs> what I can say is we should take a uh, short rest. I mean, yeah, we'll qualify this as a short rest, so any of you guys that have damage on you, you can use um, your hit die recovery points. So if you click the short rest button and the DD Beyond button thing there, it'll tell you what you can and can't do with it. And there should be an option that pops up that says you know, use hit die kind of thing. If you feel so inclined to do so. <coughs> but we'll say you guys, um, Decide to set up watch here, you know, one of these little alcoves to the side before heading deeper. You can elect whoever the hell you want to elect to, uh, you know. Well, I don't get any spells, but oh well. And you recover your hit points if you have any hit point uh... damage. So if you see on your character sheet, Rakuna. Um, yeah, yeah, I hit the short rest. Yeah, when you pull that up, you just click, click that and click on the, uh, you know, use hit die thing. Sin, do the same thing, just use whatever it does, because D&D &D Beyond will automatically roll hit point recovery for you. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't for me either. Oh, right. Yeah, so I I just had to, I, I rolled it in in here. Oh, Pretty sure you can, only, you can only use one of your hit die at a time. No, for a short rest, you can use as many as you want. Ah. Alrighty, guys. I'll talk to you well, later. See ya. See ya. But you only have so many hit die before, before you, you have to take a long rest. rest. Yeah. So yeah. You can use all three of yours now, but before you can use them again, you gotta take a long rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna stick with what I got here. Alright. I rolled a one, which means I'm not gonna roll anything good later, you know, anytime soon. So. <laughs> We'll stick with what we got. Alright. Alright. Well, I was actually expecting you guys to finish this cave tonight, but I guess not. 
it was uh it was a lot of a lot of a lot of combat but yeah i love just bumbling ahead and new attempts at stealth or I tried, man. I tried you pushing tried it so hard. I, I, I think that um, if, if we do another game like this, whoever wants to be, you know, you know, gung ho and go straight ahead, probably shouldn't be a really squishy. What? No, it's the best part because you guys are being like really slow about everything, and I'm just like, let's go, right? And then you're like, ah, squishy guy's gonna die, so I guess we gotta come, and that's fine. <laughs> If I die, I die. I mean, but, if you get to zero hit points, you fall unconscious, and then it just becomes death saves. Yeah. So. I'm betting I don't Fallon know. probably has the uh, spare the dead or whatever the hell cantrip is called. Yeah, he does. Steve yeah. You. So, just as a as a tip, if you see me doing that, it means that we're moving ungodly slow. I mean, you got two people here that are new to the game. Yeah, no, I know that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Like if if we if I do that, it basically means that like we will be in this cave for the next five weeks if we don't get going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to uh use the dark elf to take point considering you guys haven't taken any effort or initiative to actually talk with the fucking guy and, and yeah. figure out who And I'm trying to avoid that myself. What can do. If they want to, if you guys want to talk to him, that's fine. But I'm trying to avoid it myself because I know what that dark elf is. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know what he is? Huh? How do you know what he is? Look, every DM new people puts a liaison NPC in the fucking <laughs> in the fucking first campaign. He will not let us die if he has the ability to not let us die. <laughs> That guy's That's actually, why... he's the same level as you. Yeah, but he's a badass, like... I mean, his character sheet, I think, is probably on the, the overlay right now. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, oh, maybe he is. Yeah, I put him in there. The only difference he has, he's got, um... I, the way I put his backstory together is he rolled off and ended up with an artifact as part of his backstory. Lacuna has one, too. Yeah. But his allows him some unique weaponry. Yeah, like the conjured longbow and all that good stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, but he is kind of a badass. I'm gonna, like, he just is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it'll taper off really quick the higher you guys get in levels, but yeah, right now he just seems like it. But at the same time, the way you guys go, like, Gallus, sorry, he's a fucking bona fide badass. The guy's got a plus seven to his attack rolls so yeah at minimum he's doing mm -hmm. eight damage every fucking swing well so do i with my eldritch blast but i, I kind of abandoned it about halfway through <laughs> when well, i started running through the cave your eldritch blast if you do it at melee distance you to your disadvantage in rolls yeah no that's what i mean like i abandoned it once i started getting and into melee and whatnot. plus seven to hit with eldritch blast not to actually do damage oh yeah because you didn't still. take the um, agonizing blast, whatever the hell this thing. No, but it is a spear. So if I decided I want to like hit four things in a line, does that let you do that? I didn't. I didn't read yeah, the spear is piercing. So like, if I roll and it goes through, like, I mean, you, you would be able to like make me roll for it instead of just saying it pierces. Let me double check that because I'm pretty sure it's not piercing. I mean, anytime you level up, you can change those packs, too, if you decide you don't like the way one of them works. Yeah. Well, I know what I'm changing immediately. Yeah, what's that? I fucked up. <laughs> I have two light, sp light cantrips for some reason. <laughs> because, because I had you, Celestial uh... Legacy, and then the pack hat gives me light. Oh, you could just change. I'll just let you change that right now if you want, because... Like you said, it was you fucked up. So if you want to change that spell now, go ahead and change it. I mean, I feel like I should double down on it and just do it when we level up. All right, that's fine. Uh, yeah, your elder spear just makes it so that its range is three hundred feet. It doesn't pierce. Oh, damn! 
So that would have been nice. You have the stupid long range on it, right? Yeah. And because you have that range, you don't take disadvantage. Because normally, if you do an attack roll, that's beyond your sight, which currently for you is a maximum of 120 feet in daylight, 60 feet in um, night. In the dark, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then it's, you know, you only got so far to see. Whereas, case in point, because of the class setup of the ranger guy, is a metagame moment. His dark vision is 150 feet. Mm -hmm. That fucker can see far. A.K.A. That fucker can scout. <laughs> yeah, but we're not letting him. <laughs> Mostly because, like, okay. It would have to be, like, you would have to take point at that point. I don't know. That's why I haven't done it. I mean, if you or... guys want him to do that stuff, just say, hey, do it. Otherwise, I'm going to just play him as he'll stay on the front line so long as he's able to capable to do it and stay shoulder to shoulder with Galasar. Or yeah. at this point, like where you guys were ahead, it made more sense for him to stay back and just pick shit off at range. But he's gonna play smart as an NPC until we decide to use him some other way. I mean, I don't know. Currently, I'm playing him as the way his background is. Yeah. So he's it's the way he is. I think he should keep you should keep him like that. <laughs> I mean, that's why he's he's asking you guys a lot of like inane for questions like what the fuck are you doing? But no one bothered to answer him yet, but Well yeah. Wait. There's that. Figured they're just rhetorical questions really. I did too. I mean, it's partially rhetorical and partially like, why the fuck are you doing that? Hey mm -hmm. Warlock, why are you running ahead when you know you can't take a fucking hit? <laughs> Because I like it. Like, um, this Devil's Sight Pact, that thing would be legit for you at range, Sin. Because it lets you see through magical darkness. Mm. So if someone casts darkness, you can see through that. Yeah, but I still can only see 60 feet in the no, dark. You can see 120 feet. Oh... See, okay, and that's the thing is, I want to know if there's a way we can can like open this up uh, for just like one person, or like you know, for people who have specific vision. That's the only thing I don't you like. Can, about this there are settings on those little tokens that you can mess with. I don't know if they do anything. Well, see, the problem is for to do what you're looking for, which is that. You can set, there's an ambient light feature you can set on it, but to have that in Roll20, you need to pay for a premium account. And I'm not paying the subscription for a premium account. Well, so how much is it? Oh, I don't know. Let's pull it up. I'm guessing something like 10 to 20. I mean, it might even be less than that. Uh, I, I know it's a subscription service thing. I remember that. Um... Wait a second. Where the fuck is the marketplace on this thing? Account. Wait. Yeah, so there's should... a subscription service you can do where you can become a plus or a pro member. Um, the pro account, I think, is what gives you... No, the plus account will give you the dynamic lighting and the line of sight features on the roll twenty table. Oh. Okay. Okay, so the plus account is for it's about five bucks a month, and or the pro account is ten bucks a month. Or is pro. Account. Yeah. So you can either do the plus account is five bucks a month. <laughs> oh, sorry. Or fifty bucks for a year, which ends up saving you. 10 bucks or something like that. Yeah. The pro account is basically just double 10 bucks a month or 100 bucks for a year. But I already paid for a year for the D&D Beyond thing so that we can all share the character sheets and all that shit, so I'm not going to double down on that. Yeah. Else. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'll do it. Hold on. It's up to you. Did, oh, wait, does it have to be off of your account? I don't know. Um, 
I started looking into it before, and then when I saw that there was a cost associated with it, I was like, eh, we can play with the free setting. I really don't see a point in doing that. Yeah, I don't know. It just feels kind of cumbersome as, like, every time we ask you, like, oh, oh, what can I see? And you're like, oh, one person can see this, and everyone else can see this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Looks like there is a way you can gift it to somebody. I went to give someone else a subscription. There's a way I can do that. And then it's a great idea. Visit their profile page and you'll see it. Find a give gift button. You can All also right. visit the gift Go page. Can I click on your thing and get. But, I mean, I don't oh. mind doing it. The only thing that the only person in this part. Oh, no. I think Galasar doesn't have dark vision either, right? No, he doesn't. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, so there's like a varying degree. It's there's only two range. people in our group. Yeah, they're the only two. Yeah, so um, I mean, I don't mind doing it. I just feel like my personal side of it is I feel like that um, Orzol, from Joe's perspective, is missing out on things because <clears throat> he's seeing more of the map than his character would actually see. If you know what I'm saying, I don't yeah. know how he personally feels about that. But that's, well, that's the only what I'm thing that, that I see is going to be a hindrance to honestly to any of the immersion effect of it. Because yeah, can you link me your profile? Yeah, I mean, like, it's not that big of a deal, especially not like a monthly subscription. If you just want to reveal stuff, I can pretend I don't know it. <laughs> that's why I was when I was saying Galliser was taking a point there using the light of Zax. <laughs> Excuse me, that's only. I mean, that's 10 feet shorter than, um, the, uh, what the hell is it called? Um, actual range. Yeah. So Honestly, it's... for, for, for my point is, I don't mind doing it. Um, uh, and it's mostly just to make it easier for you, Nez. Just cause like. Every time we move, you're like, oh, I gotta open this up. I gotta open this up. I gotta open this up. I mean, like, you I don't know mind what I mean? doing that either, because at the same time, it makes it easier for me to handle stuff in the background, too. Like, there's not... the only part there, like those zombies that were coming in, you guys there, I was shuffling more in there than, you know, they were stacking up because I was trying to make sure they were at the edge of your vision. Yeah. But that's pretty much it, so. It is what it is. Like I said, I don't mind too much if that's people don't mind dealing with it. Whenever stuff came up on the map, I usually pretended like I didn't know about it until I got there. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's something that it certainly would be easier moving forward. And I'm still getting used to this, how this whole little twenty thing works too. So there's that. Uh, I'm actually going to end the stream now because we're. 18 minutes just past. talking yeah we're just muttering and talking yeah so we'll resume the stream up again which next friday i think is the 22nd yes yes i think, so. I think i'm gonna take the day off anyway because it's i get a uh a birthday holiday with the client so i'll take a move it from thursday to friday and give myself a friday off there you go then i have more prep time for the friday night's game oh. yeah nice i'll take a day off too you know I wish I could take a day off. <laughs> Screw you guys. 